Okay. Mr. Cushing, could you uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we all remain standing for a minute and uh, just have a moment of silence for our 41st president? Yes. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting for Monday, December 3rd. First agenda is public comment period. Is anybody from the public to speak? <laughs> Mr. Preston, how are you today? I'm Brian, I'm good. How about yourself? Right next to Wonderful. Good evening, Charlie. You too, Aries. I just want to make this quick. It's great to see the delegation in here. We're very lucky to have this whole crew. On uh, the minutes of November 19th, the BOS draft minutes, the last paragraph, page 4 of 7, Town Manager Welch intend to write a letter to FEMA, District Supervisor, have a problem with FEMA, certifies that there are at least six properties in town that are in violation of federal flood control regulations. Determination was made by a drive-by. They need to produce evidence that there is a violation. I'm just curious, and I realize there's no back and forth about, you know, what the properties are, the six properties that were mentioned. And I'm also curious about, um, you know, who determined it was done by a drive-by, what it was. And, you know, maybe later on when Jay comes up, you know, that stuff might come up with FEMA. But, uh, you know, it's curious to know, and, you know, transparency. It's like it's, you, I question what it was about. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the public that would like to speak? Seeing none, bring it back to the board for announcements and community calendar. Mary right, Louise? Um, I want to thank Unitil, who have uh, undertaken their annual tree trimming. And they were on Little River Road today, and I'm very pleased. We don't want power outages during the winter, and I think they're being very proactive. And I was quite happy to see the... Uh, tree trimmers today. Um, so Tom Andrew, do we get an update on how Rick is doing? Not since the last one that was put on email. But so everything's fine gone fine? Doing fine. Good. Okay, good to hear. And I just wanted to say it seems like everyone had a uh, fun time on Saturday at our annual Christmas parade, <laughs> so it was a great day as usual. Jim? Yeah, I'd like to... Uh, Congratulate the rec department for a great tree lighting on Friday night. It was a super uh, event, and they had a, a ton of people there, which was really nice, and a lot of organizations were representative. And also the uh, Experience Hampton and, and the Parade Committee for putting on a really good parade. It was an excellent one, I think one of the better ones we've had. And I think most every group in town was represented in some way. So it was, it was exceptional. So congratulations to both those groups. From uh, my vantage point, there was a, a lot of people, probably the most I've ever seen at one of the Hampton parades. Uh, I, I saw a lot of you there. And so um, one other thing is uh, congratulations again to them on the parade. Just uh, kind of a memory is uh, 19 years ago today, there were six firefighters killed in Worcester. Uh, so it seems like it happened just yesterday. Yeah. But in fact, and in, in one of those families, you know, has family right here in Hampton, so uh, we just let them know that we're thinking about them at this time. Um, I guess that's it for announcements and community calendar. Great parade, great, great uh, tree lighting. I would say there was probably 700 people down there. Uh, it, it was live streaming, and you look at if you look at it that way, it was uh, there was a ton of people there, and just everybody was having fun, and it's yeah. good to see community events like that, the parade, everybody was having fun. And it's good to see a community events like that. And really quickly, we were happy to see the town manager and town council there at the festivities. It was, and uh, Jim walked the entire parade after having his knee replaced a week and a half ago. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. Uh, pretty amazing. And uh, along with our, our new uh, state reps and our older state reps. <laughs> so... All right, so next we have the approval of the minutes for November 19th. I will session. move the approval of minutes of November 19th public session. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. 
I will move the approval of minutes of November 19, 2018, non-public session. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. There. Only have one thing on the consent agenda. That's a Hampton Police Association donation of $1,050 to the Hampton Parks and Recs. I will so move that we accept. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next, we have our appointments. And our first <laughs> appointment up is our, our newly elected uh, state delegation. So. When you come up, if, you, if you'd all introduce yourself, I'm sure people uh, had a chance that voted on you, but some may not even, some faces we recognize all the time and others it may take a little while. So, if you want to start, Mr. Edgar, or Representative Edgar, just let us know who you are. And Mike Edgar from Hampton. Pat <laughs> Bushwick. <laughs> I'm Randy Cushing from Winnicott Road in Hampton. Uh, Tom Sherman from Rye, New Hampshire. Tom Lockman from Hampton. Jason Jerman uh, of Seabrook. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and congratulations on your election. Uh, you've got a lot to do over the next two years. Uh, it's talking from somebody who's been up there in the right. past. Uh, it, it's probably the best, best education you're ever going to get. <laughs> no. and, uh, <laughs> Uh, enjoy the ride because it could be fun or it could be bumpy. So, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, just at the outset, I just want to acknowledge and thank Tracy Emmerich and Phil Bean for their yes. service to the town. Um, I think that oftentimes we don't say thank you enough to people who make the kind of sacrifice that you know Jim knows uh, is involved in doing their doing that work. And I just they they both worked really hard for the town. And um, elections are tough sometimes, winning or losing. I. I know that, but I just, Phil and Tracy really served Hampton. Well, thank and, you. and I would like yeah. to add uh, thank you to Dan Ennis for his service over the last two years. Yeah. Very good. Thank you very much. I think what we, we, we kind of look for is what you guys have for uh, proposed legislation that you, you, you're going to look at, what, what you're thinking about, and then I'll, I'll bring it to the, uh, our board to see if they have any questions. So okay. whoever wants to start first. I think I'm the dean, so I'll start first. I will just tell you that the, that the, you know, the first piece of legislation that I had drafted this year is the, the bill that would restore a portion of the state's uh, contribution to the retirement costs for ah. police, fire, um, and, and teachers. Um, you know, it's been, I, someone said promises made, promises kept. Mm -hmm. The promise was made and the promise wasn't kept. And I, I'm somewhat optimistic that by, um, by the end of this year, that there will be at least a, a, some incremental um, attempt to help re reduce property taxes, which is what that you know that, that that property tax increase that was imposed by the legislature in 2011, when it took away that contribution, impacted everybody. And I've been, you know, we, we lost by one vote last time. I've been really uh, pleased by the number of people who recognize that it's important for Concord to take care of the cities and towns. Um, and so that's, I would just say that was my, my priority legislation. Um, and I guess that I have some other, just I know Regina did, we did put in legislation to continue the Seacoast Water Commission, um, which I think, and also uh, legislation to continue to try to deal with remediation and yep. uh, to prevent migration of toxins away from the, the Coakley Landfill, you know, site. So. And then I have other legislation too, but that's <coughs> stuff that specifically impacts the town. Um, I didn't, I, I made a strategic uh, choice not to try to uh, end the corporate welfare of Next Era um, in the first year because I want to focus my attention on trying to get the restoration of the, you know, contribution to the pension funds, but that's still something that will be addressed next year. Excellent. Uh, I had uh, I have submitted uh, a request for legislation for uh, the the authority if if we so desire for the town to be able to uh, increase the the parking fees at the parking on the parking meters at the beach um, in an effort to uh, increase the funding that comes back to the town to help to defer the costs um, 
this is a proposal that came to us. Um, Nancy Stiles had, had received mm -hmm. the information, the, the proposal from a constituent. Um, you know, with the recognition that there's there's always concerns uh, about the parking fees, and so it, it is it is just an authority to to do that. Um, and so you know, we'll, we certainly need to uh, consider the 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 impacts of that, and uh, before we, we we necessarily do that, but it it's it's it, it's to give us the opportunity to do that if we so desire. Um, I would add uh, on the Senate side, there's uh, several roles that are not legislative but more supportive. And some of those are, um, I've been participating in the Hampton Bridge meetings. Um, I will be meeting with Parks shortly to, uh, my goal would be to make sure that you all have all the advocacy and support during that process and so working closely with the select board and making sure that your voice is heard at the state level I think is really important. Uh, it's one of my roles. Another role is to make sure that in the budget we are addressing uh, both the mental health and opioid crisis. Um, mm -hmm. We have one of the lowest Medicaid reimbursement rates which is the funding that supports Seacoast mental health and a lot mm -hmm. of the other area services. And as many of you are aware, we really don't have a lot of services here or down in Seabrook. So making sure that those that uh, the state remembers that Seabrook and Hampton um, are part of the state and that they need the help, uh, especially on those two me uh, those two medical issues, uh, is a role that I'll be doing both through the budget, hopefully, and if not, we'll be pa uh, introducing legislation to make sure that happens. So I hope to work very closely with the board in, um, in representing your needs, especially at the transportation level on the bridge um, and any other issues that you might, and the beach, of course. Mike, you? <laughs> Good evening. Um, I wanted to mention the, uh, some work that was tried last year, but it, now it's kind of evolved into something a little bit different. It has to do with trying to get some type of uh, occupancy fee. It's going to be difficult. It's not going to be in the meals and rooms tax format. It'll be more in a hotel fee. And we're talking to, to Fred about it quite a bit. Some others. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. It's, it might have a little bit of a shakedown uh, uh, cruise on that one, trying to get it through the first time. So. Um, there is, uh, I'm also uh, along with, with Tom on the, uh, the Seabrook Hampton Bridge Advisory Group. In fact, we're meeting again tomorrow. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, hopefully, uh, and I feel pretty confident I'll be reassigned to the uh, Public Works and Highways Committee mm -hmm. and be involved with the, the bridge from that respect also. Um, but with, with the Public Works, with the bridge, <coughs> and also with the, you know, the ongoing studies and hopefully work on Ocean Boulevard and, in, in those areas that that is coming up it's uh, that that's, re that's to me uh, that, that's really important so that's what I plan on you know concentrating on uh, as far as you know what's what's coming up it's also when you start talking about the bridge and some other things it's I hope this year to be able to spend a little bit of time on just analyzing the revenue that we have coming in because I think that that when people start talking about well let's have a falling bridge or let's do this or that um, there, there there is a money issue you know, when it comes yeah. to the, those type of projects. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Tom. Thank you. Tom Lockman. Uh, one of the concerns I have, uh, and I know people on the Seacoast share it, is the difficulty in filling open positions. Uh, and I think that is in part related to uh, our family friendly policies, you know, and that we have uh, an education policy in terms of full day kindergarten funding. It's still not quite there. Uh, so looking to ensure that full day kindergarten is fully funded across the state regardless of Keno revenue. Making sure our UNH tuition uh, is under control so we don't have the highest in-state tuition in the country. Yeah. And uh, with regards to getting Hampton's fair share back, we have an opportunity when the budget comes through the House 
to ensure that the meals and rooms tax revenue distribution catch up formula is not suspended as it has been in yes. many of past years. So uh, I have gotten to know up to 32 young electeds like myself who are looking at this with fresh eyes and clear heads and, and this doesn't make sense to them. So I'm going to do the best I can uh, to be a thorn in the side of anyone who thinks that's going to slide through the house quickly and easily without our money coming home. Um, with regards to family friendly policies, I want to see paid family medical leave insurance so people can care for loved ones and newborns without uh, going without wages for those precious few weeks. Uh, supporting Rennie's bill on water uh, commission, a more long term water commission, which I think is vital. And finally, uh, filed an LSR today so that medical providers and pharmacists who prescribe an opiate have to disclose, either through a warning on the label, uh, on the bottle, uh, that one, this is an opiate. Not everybody who, who gets prescribed an opiate knows that's what they're getting because mm -hmm. they go by many names. Yeah. Uh, and two, the risk factors associated with prolonged use of opiates. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's important information. We talk a lot about uh, the value of personal responsibility in this state, but first you have to have the right information. Uh, and knowing that you're being prescribed an opiate, I think, is essential uh, in this there's room to improve there. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Jamron. <laughs> <laughs> I'll roll over. Can you get us more microphones? In <laughs> sure. So <clears throat> I actually am kind of lucky. I served on the Judiciary Committee in the last um, s term of the House uh, representing Seabrook and Hampton Falls. So now that I'm in Hampton, I've done a few things. Um, I have legislation going forward now. Um, and I'm hoping your Conservation Commission person is here. Yeah, he is. He is. Um, I received a message from our Conservation Commission chairperson in Seabrook that there was quite an issue with jet skis on our marshes during high tides going through and tearing it up. Uh, so I've been introduced a bill to make that un unlawful no matter what the tide is. Great. Um, so that's one insight. The other thing is I'm co-sponsoring uh, a a bill from a Seabrook representative that allows a nonprofit that is in the same town of, of a, uh, a charity gaming place, which I know Hampton has one on the beach, mm -hmm. uh, that your nonprofits in your town will get an additional days at that venue uh, as opposed to others. Because we find that, hey, it's great that you have that at Hampton Beach, but you'll find that 80% of the people that are using that are from outside yeah. Rockingham County even. So we're trying to, to get a little bit more for that. And along with the fundraising part of it, um, last year I introduced four bills uh, that were part of the license plate program. And if you're not familiar with that, I'll try to explain it really quickly. Um, you would go to the town clerk or to the uh, registry, and you would get what's called a decal license plate, which is 15 additional dollars in addition to your uh, registration. Then you would go to a nonprofit organization that has been authorized by the legislature, to purchase a decal from that nonprofit and then fix that decal to that license plate. So you get two things. One, selling you that decal uh, raises funds for that nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And two, it gives them visibility on the highways. So last year we did one for the Boy Scouts, uh, Daniel Webster Council, uh, Granite Pathways, which has been the uh, recovery folks from Portsmouth that had a place in Seabrook at one time. Um, and we did one for Friends of Hampton Falls Bandstand, and I'm trying to remember the last, oh, Sea Coast Youth Services, which uh, serves the town of Seabrook, and the after school <laughs> programs, and a lot of mentoring programs. So <clears throat> I made it no secret that I wanted to continue um, putting that forth, and we actually, at the suggestion of a Hampton resident, uh, I introduced a bill to extend that program to uh, Future Insight, and if you're not familiar with them, they're actually the New Hampshire affiliate of the uh, Association for the Blind. So that is one of my bills. Another one for the Seabrook Rail Trail Group. Um, so I'm just trying to look through here. Um, and uh, I think that's the last thing is, and I think all of us at the table uh, recognize that the legislature was not very nice to some students at uh, Lincoln Aikman in Hampton Falls in mm -hmm. 2015. And I, I'll leave that alone, but if you go to Seacoast online, you'll see the bad history. Uh, we've all decided that we'd like to put that bill forward again on behalf of those students who are now Winnicunit students and see if we can get the uh, state raptor named as the uh, red-tailed hawk. So mm. 
Um, we'd love to have letters to support anybody that wants to support that. Uh, we <clears throat> we'll let you know where you can send those letters of support emails to that committee that's hearing that bill. Uh, I think it's really important that these youth understand that, hey, sometimes you lose, but sometimes you can win at, after mm -hmm. all. So uh, thank you very much. And if there's anything you need, uh, all of us have our emails at the legislature, and you can let, let us know what you need. Questions from the board? I have a couple of thoughts. Um, I certainly appreciate that effort to get funding again to put against retirements for our public servants. What the towns and communities are doing is building up debt, building up a lot of debt mm -hmm. since we're the sole uh, source of helping. Um, red-listed bridges are a very sore spot with me. Uh, they say red-listed bridges, which means in my mind that the bridge is ready to go, needs to be tossed out, and yet the state drags and drags and drags and drags along on replacing the bridge. It, it's a joke to me. What, are you going to wait till it falls in the river? So I'd like to see a little more pressure put on the state on, on the bridges and be a little more proactive. Um, Route 1A, uh, f when Fred gave us our materials for tonight, there was a, a, what do you want to call it, a, a notice that the state's talking about extending or uh, re, re, refurbishing 1A. They're going to repave Route 1A next year. Oh, next year. What are they going to do? Is the state going to just throw a top coat on? Yeah. Especially at Hampton Beach on 1A, and you've got sinkholes there, and there's a big drainage problem there, and what are they going to do about the sidewalks there? And I'm just thinking about the, the, the lower, well, that whole stretch up 1A. <coughs> I'd like more specifics on that. If they're just going to come by and throw a top coat on, Stay home. Um, the uh, Good job for you, Mike. <laughs> the I, mean, I think that Mike Edgar being on the Public Works and Highway is going to be a They're Michael, planning on a three-quarter inch overlay from the Massachusetts state line to Dumas Avenue. Both sides. When of, did they? That was when did that? <clears throat> that, that? I'll send you a yeah, copy of it. I, it came from Division Six just yeah. last week. Okay, it's the first time yeah. I've heard it's it. It's part of their paving program for the division. It's. Wonderful. Too. Yeah, this is a regular <laughs> paving program as they rotate yeah. right through. They, That's correct. Yeah, well, it's going to waste a whole pile of money if they're, if we're still going to have the sinkholes and all the messes and the the improper drainage and all all the other stuff they've got down there on that road. And um, the I just want to mention because this really got me excited. <laughs> The rail trail. I know you mentioned about a rail trail. This this thing has really been annoying me, and I got the memo from Fred uh, over the weekend, and I've been reading the darn thing, and I think this is terrifying, and I don't know what other communities do. But uh, they're talking about the railroad right of way, which is what we've got in Hampton. Post-construction, establish a protocol to ensure that future workers Perform, performing maintenance or construction within the right of way are made aware of the need for the appropriate uh, things, posting of signage, and they're talking about the um, uh, contamination, which never occurred to me. But this is an article that says, Arsenic and Old Railroads. Is the state of New Hampshire going to let lead arsenate uh, arsenic solution, arsenic weed control sprays, arsenic laced slag used as b railroad bed fill, lubricating oil and diesel that dripped from the trains are likely sources of the petroleum product found along the lines. Other sources of contaminants associated with historic railroad operation may include coal ash from engines, creosote from ties, and polynuclear aromatic hydrocarbons from the diesel exhaust. And it's telling us that we're going to have to have our inspector, when all this is being done, figure out all this stuff. What are we doing? What is the state of New Hampshire doing? This, this is... 
I think Fred can. If I may share that with you folks, you can share it around and toss it back to me eventually. But I am appalled. It sounds nice, have a little rail trail and go for a nice little walk. That scares me, folks. And now I'll shut up. <laughs> um, thank you all for coming in tonight. Uh, I'm very glad to hear what all of you just said because it, uh, well, one, I'm going to just go down by, I had some notes that I wanted to discuss with you, so I'm just going to address it based on what you said. So, Rennie, mm -hmm. your bill for the restor restoration of some of the uh, New Hampshire retirement system? Yes. yes. So, last time you did that, you tried to shoot for 15%, yes. right? Yes. So, right now, the town of Hampton's debt that just mm -hmm. keeps occurring, I think we added about $2.3 to it this year, but I don't have the financials. Yeah is almost $26 million yes. for our pension liability as of our 1231 financial statement. So if you got 15% of that back for us over the past three years, it's been about 6.5 million, almost 6.6 .6 million of expense to the town. So that would be almost a million dollars that you'd be uh, yeah. in I mean, essence claiming back for the state. Fred, yeah, Fred, and you, the, the, the board sent a, a letter last year. I think the yes. calculation was, what, 1.3 million or something like It's close to 1.3. 1.3. I mean, I, I know that the, the number uh, for the state for a year is, is 41 million. Right. Mm -hmm. And my, my argument, I was saying, well, you just, $41 million, you just set and put $100 million in the rainy day fund rather than sending the money back to the cities and towns and right. meeting your obligation. I'm just, just send 41, you know, the money is there. I, I put, you know, I, it's not, the original 15 to me is reasonable. And it's, you know, and it's doable. So I'm, if I'm trying to be pragmatic. Right, no, that makes sense, 15%. To <laughs> so that's why I see that. I, I don't, yeah. under, I guess I don't quite understand, like, what the problem is, not with any of you, but I, I'm glad that you're all going to attack this again because I also have the state aid to municipalities, which I believe the town manager has yeah. copies for you if you're interested. This was an NHMA conference right. I attended. And this pretty much told me that since 2008, the state stopped giving us about $700 million. Yep. Yep. And the two biggest pieces of that are New Hampshire Retirement System and the Rooms and Meals, which mm -hmm. right. I know is one of your favorite topics. That's a good read. So, um, and school that, building uh, aid yes. <laughs> and, <laughs> and highway and you know, waste I only get so much time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, so the Rooms and Meals alone, <laughs> right now I think they said they were about 21%, like somewhere between 21 and 25%. Maybe just under but getting that closer to the 40 would be substantial for uh so there was a catch-up formula that was yeah. instituted and it's meant to climb our way back over time to 40 percent and it gets suspended in the budget process so under law under statute it's there it's just getting suspended in the budget process and uh, in the past some governors have suspended it in year one and let it go in year two so you know that's half the battle in the last uh two-year session uh, both years it was suspended so and it can the governor has first crack then the house then the Senate uh, and it can be taken out or put in back put back in at any one of those phases so uh, the best we can do uh, in the house is, is make sure it's in there in the house as best we can and we can do that in the Senate. Yeah. well that's great to hear thank you and there's a bunch of other things oh and thank you for the trying with the Water Commission. I think that's very important because if it's not PFCs, it's going to be the next thing. I mean, whatever we find next. So I think that's important. And uh, I really appreciate what you do, and I wish you luck. And the <laughs> revenues for the parking, that would be amazing if we could get something from that. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, Hampton is, I feel like Hampton is not the only town that has these similar problems. Maybe some places don't have it to the extent we do. But I think that overall revenue that the state is stopped giving us would be best suited just left to the municipalities so that we could help ourselves a lot right. more because we really know what's going on. Exactly, and I think that's that's a very good point. Is if we can, you know, if if we can uh, leverage what's happening in other areas as well, yeah, then we right. can, you know, we can improve our chances of of yeah. getting something through if we can you like know. even with like the mental health and I mean it's like we got the um, it used to be called the Odyssey House I can't think of the name of it now mm -hmm. 
And I mean, that's, it's a lot of, you know, we have, I know our police department spends a lot of time over there. And then when they need the assistance, you know, they call the state in for backup or however it works. But they, at the same time, they're the ones that are, you know, know what those kids, what their specific issues are. So, I mean, it would be nice if we could just have some of the resources, not just financial ones, just left here to begin with and sort of let us sustain ourselves. So, thank you very much. Jim. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming in. You know, it's interesting, New Hampshire, 400 people in the House, citizen legislators, I love it. I think it's, it's great re uh, representation. But the only problem is, I think sometimes there are too many RSAs trying to be passed, and people lose sight of the big picture. Yeah. So I think it's really, really crucial to, to narrow in on what can be done, what can be accomplished, rather than simply putting in RSAs and hoping. You know, I would love to see New Hampshire become more of a home rule state. Right now, as we know, municipalities can only do what the legislators, what the state allows us to do. So when you talk about, you know, adding a, a little bit to the rooms, uh, a hotel tax or something, you know, we got to go to the legislator and ask if we can do it in our own town, which I think home rule would be a lot better, I think, much better. But I really think that uh, narrowing in on the things that can get done is really important. And it's interesting, Tom, that on the, uh, what you were talking about, the prescriptions, because I just recently had two, and both of them said that they were opiates, and both of them had a warning on it that it was an addictive. So is that something that already is taking place? It, it, um, unfortunately, a lot of those warnings are illegible because the size of the print is very small, and especially when you get into the actual disclaimer that goes with it. So this is a, a great idea. Yeah. We have we have actual evidence of people, for example, cough syrup that contains codeine, um, people who actually had opioid dependency did not know that the cough syrup had um, a, a narcotic in it and uh, relapsed and subsequently died of an overdose. So um, clear and appropriate labeling for opioids, I, mm -hmm. I support it 100%. And, and there is some labeling, but if you've ever tried to read it, especially if you have challenged eyes, which many of us do over 60, um, it makes it really hard to, to do that. Good. And the other thing is, you know, Rusty knows, I know, Rennie knows, Mike knows, people have been up there. Most of the work's done in the committees. Yep. And that's where you really got to get things done. That's where you really got to get known. That's where you really got to get support so it comes out of a committee unanimously. But thank you for what you're doing. Yeah. I want to bring up is, is, is and it was brought up a couple times here before, is, is I think the rail trail has a potential of being an excellent mm -hmm. project for us here throughout the whole seacoast, mm -hmm. whether we continue it on through Seabrook all the way to, to Portsmouth. But it shouldn't strap the towns that it's going through with everything. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't be that one of the things that's in there is that it, in 180 days, the state can come to you and say, we're taking that land back and you got nothing you can do about it. Mm. Why would it? Why would any town want to bring that on okay. if yeah. that within 180 days, the state can just say, never mind, we're, we're going to do something else with that property. Yep. And you got no say over that. So I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done on that thing. I'm a firm believer in the rail trail. I think it'd be great. It'd be nice to have. I was, uh, I was at the airport restaurant over in Northampton a couple of weeks ago, and there was, it was a rainy day, and there was a guy in there on a bicycle. And I, so I sat down and talked with him. He'd come over from Newburyport. He said, I wanted to try the rail, the tr rail trail to see how it was. And he, he rode his bike over here, and he was riding back. And I'd, I'd said to him, you want to ride back? It's raining. And he goes, nah, I'm all, I'm all set for it. But so there's a guy that was using it in the rain. And I think if, if we had it so it was in better shape and we could use it and promote it, I think it would have some business opportunities along the rail trail. I think that would be done. But it shouldn't be, the town shouldn't be held hostage that they need to do that. So hopefully you guys can look towards that and bring that back. If, uh, Mr. Edgar, if you want yeah. this, this is the uh, the overlay for Route uh, 1A. I'll give you this. Yeah. That will scare it's, you. So. Yeah. That's, Thank you. That's good. Uh, thanks. So. Division 6. Yeah, it's from Division 6. Yeah. So that, that's showing what they, they want to do as an overlay. You got any questions you want? Yes, um, I wanted to thank very much uh, Representative Cushing and Representative Edgar 
along with Representative Bean for being a, um, among a brave group of six that took mm. on the Coakley Landfill Group yeah. on the issue of whether they're subject to the right to know law or not. Uh, and we uh, received a successful decision in that regard against many odds uh, in October. And uh, the, uh, the other side spent $63,000 reportedly in fighting yeah. against us, but we were successful, and I thank you for that. Uh, now comes the time for some follow-up in that regard. Uh, the, uh, now that the Coakley Landfill Group has to operate in public, Mm -hmm. uh, we have an opportunity to uh, influence both what they do and what EPA and DES do. Uh, DES seems to close its eyes to the reality that there may be a contribution to the PFAS contamination in Aquarian Wells coming from Coakley Landfill Group, mm -hmm. contrary to what our expert Thomas mm -hmm. Ballestero from UNH has had to say. Uh, EPA is coming around, however. They're recognizing that there is a radial contamination off that site going in many directions. <laughs> and I think uh, following up on the very good work that Representative Mesmer did, uh, it's important to continue <coughs> that going uh, to making sure that the type of things that are now being seen in Greenland with 1,4-dioxane contaminating the uh, wells on the Breakfast Hill Golf Club mm, uh, yeah. don't get forgotten and uh, that uh, we can deal with that. Um, so I think the influence of, of you folks on DES is important in that regard. Um, I also wanted to say that, of course, the, uh, the town of Hampton has had a lawsuit against the state of New Hampshire over, over items relating to Hampton Beach. Um, I think the, uh, the idea of parking revenues being raised and perhaps going to Hampton uh, <laughs> to, uh, for a fair share of the burdens that we bear, both for public works police and fire to support the state park could go a long way uh, to resolving some differences. Also uh, a fairer share mm -hmm. in the rooms and meals taxes, which is a legislative mm -hmm. formula. Uh, if you look at the, the uh, sources of the monies that go into that and, and who gets them in, 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 the, uh, in the distribution formula, <laughs> it's not fair. We're not getting our fair share. Portsmouth isn't either. Uh, and so uh, if that can be worked on, that can also go a long way. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we really appreciate your efforts, and thank you. Ms. Yeah, go ahead. I have a quick follow-up. What, what scares me in that rail trail thing, and as you read it, it looks like the town is going to be holding the bag for cleaning up all that contamination. And if there's something that lingers or whatever, I don't want the town sued. That, that's terrifying when you read that and you read all the contaminants in there. Rail trails may be wonderful, but I don't want this town responsible for that mess that they're describing in there with all that contamination. And one more quick thought on these opioids. I, I was dumb enough to break my heel a couple of years back. And when I was discharged um, from the hospital, uh, they sent me home with a card, it was about like that, and it had the little bubble things on it, and I, it didn't say what it was, but I'm guessing it was some type of painkiller thing. And I looked at it, and I went to Hannaford, and I turned it in at the pharmacy. So people maybe should be told that your local pharmacy, and they're very nice if, if you have some of this stuff, um, turn it in to your local pharmacy because they're very nice people and they'll take that and then you don't have all this medication stuff running around. Uh, I'd like to just speak about the rail trail for a few moments. Um, I don't want to take up all your time. I know you have Warren articles and everything else to cover. Um, I was actually one of the founding members of the Friends of the Seabrook Rail Trail six years ago. Uh -huh. uh, I've been <laughs> working in that regard. I was also a, a Commissioner at the Rock and End Planning Commission. I worked with uh, your town manager and my town manager from Seabrook on several occasions to try to revamp this agreement that you're looking at. And I'll tell you, what you just read is abhorrent. Uh, so I will tell you that we've been fighting with the Department of Transportation to change the language and stop dropping everything on to the towns. I'll, I'll talk about a very short uh, thing. In the town of Seabrook at the state line, 
uh, with Salisbury. Salisbury has declared their area as a wetland. In New Hampshire, it's not a wetland under our DES. DEP in Mass d didn't say it's wetland. And why? Um, New Hampshire DOT's property, where they have drainage ditches that they haven't maintained since 1957, uh, are inundated with s uh, silt. And they do not drain properly. So <clears throat> whose problem is it? Well, Seabrook's an MS4 town, as Hampton is. And one of the things is we have to map out all the outlays. We need to know where water flows are. And guess what? The state of New Hampshire won't allow us onto their property to look at those things. <laughs> so they're making us violate the MS4 permit. Oh uh, and I said to the, jokingly to the town of Seabrook, we ought to sue the state. That sounds familiar, right? <laughs> uh, that they are causing us to, to, uh, to not follow our MS4 permit. Um, and. It got a little bit of traction in, in Concord. I think they sat down with uh, Fred a couple times, um, and we've, we barked at it. We barked at him a couple times at Northampton Town Hall and, and such. I did want to let you know that there is an advisory committee that's put together. It's chaired by uh, the folks at Rockland and Planning Commission, and I would be happy to have this delegation, Seabrook's delegation, uh, sit with their transportation planner to go over this document. Because as they say, uh, I, I lost track of this document almost two years ago now. Yeah. And two years ago it was, everything's on the town. Every expense is on the town, every maintenance is on the town, and I don't think that's the way that, that's not proper management of the asset. So I agree. I think having a, a rail trail is a wonderful thing for the economy, and it's a great thing for, hey, I can come up to Hampton and shop at Hanford on a bicycle, mm -hmm. or you can come to Market Basket, or you can come to Walmart, or whatever the case may be. But until the state gets their act together, uh, it's got to change. Last year, I was involved and co-sponsored a bill that would have revamped the whole rail trail uh, plan for the whole state of New Hampshire. Right. Well, it was killed in the House because there wasn't, it was in the budgetary year mm -hmm. and there was an appropriation uh, associated with the bill. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to tell you that that bill has been reintroduced this year um, by in the Senate, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that that's going to go through. You're going to find that the Department of Transportation is going to come back to the drawing table, and we're going to be part of that conversation with them uh, and the regional planning commissions, and I'm, I'm sure Fred will be involved in yeah. some fashion, that we're going to revamp their whole outlook on rail trails throughout the state because it's not just us. It's not yeah. here in Hampton. It's Northampton. It's Rye. It's Stratum. It's all these towns that it goes through, and quite frankly, we're tired of getting being promised the mine and getting the shaft, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell me that the state is going to inflict no that mess on us. I, anybody who thinks this town will accept that land unless they make it pristine and clear the whole thing and swear to us on the Bible that that land is not contaminated, I don't want to hear about it. And, and I agree with you, Mary, and Mary and Louise. Uh, in Seabrook, the, the uh, Conservation Commission actually did a project, a Greenfields project, on the railroad corridor yep. just north of the nuclear power plant and redid a culvert. And an assessment was done of the dirt there, and there was no contamination mm -hmm. detected. Well, that's in their own words. Right. Well, here in Hampton, from Depot North, there yes. was an active rail line until yes. recently. Right. So I agree with you. There should be a Greenfields <coughs> assessment done by uh, Rockland and Planning Commission, and I hope we can work with you on that. It will be. Mike. Yeah, I'm not sure where to start. <laughs> uh, but I guess Mike, Mike, with microphone. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure where to start, but I'll start with uh, thanking Mark for the work he did yeah. on the Coakley Plaza, you know, yeah. along with Paul Tume and, and yourself. You did a great job and uh, quite a precedent and precedent finding that they that they did. So that was great. Thank you. Um, almost everything people keep talking about relates to money. You know. Um, up, what I've seen in the last couple of years is, is if somebody wants something, if somebody wants something, then they got to take it from some other place. They travel. Well, what hasn't been talked about lately? We'll take it from there. It's a shell game. Yeah. So somebody ate the pea. If the uh, <laughs> when you want to have something done, it's going it's going to cost money, and people have to start from the ground up, like right. in towns. You start demanding some things. Because if there's not the money, then you can't do all these things that you're mm -hmm. talking about. Yep. You yep. can't, what, you know, the bridge and stuff. Now, as far as the, the Route 1A on the, uh, uh, the overlay, you, we know that 
but we hope that there's going to be work done there when we are talking about redesigning some things and, and doing some permanent work then if, if you don't want it you know paved for a while let you know tell tell the state not to pave that section now if you don't want it because right now it is being studied as how to fix it so you know you have to see what you what you really want and then I think I think our only problem is if they overlay it now that just pushes another five, ten well, years down right. the road where they mm -hmm. where they have to fix it, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we're hoping we, we all want to see that get done mm -hmm. right relatively soon. And it's in the ten-year plan, I believe, to have it done. It is. So uh, <laughs> they don't know. They, they haven't said. That. I don't believe. In the next ten years. It's, it's in the, the next, next ten, 10 years. years. So I just want to make sure, you know, <clears throat> I I don't mind seeing them paving it, yeah. if it's if it's a two or three year patch to get us through the two or three years until they do it. I don't want to see it push off further and further out in the 10-year plan that they, they plan on doing the beach. Because we all know what the beach is and what it brings to this state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so I can check on it in that light then, you know, if you feel like, and I'll, yep. and, and, yep. and I'll let you know. But, again, sometimes it's what you ask for. Like, we've been trying to get the rails, the trails thing going here. And if we say <laughs> that we're, we want you to make it really pristine before you, before you go out of the out of your way, basically, they've been trying to scrape the money together to purchase it because of the, the nature of having to buy it. Then right. they're, uh, you know, you, you have to wonder <clears throat> if, if in fact they would be able to. Uh, uh, where's the money going to come from to, to do that? I, I don't know. Take that money for overlay in it and put that towards overlay in the, the rail trail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying is sometimes you know we're talking about things that we want to don't want, and we got to realize what what that really means. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. I'm going to let Fred speak oh, first. Okay. He let, me, a let me try to answer something on the rail trail. Uh, the, the current proposal, and the State Department of Transportation is not making these proposals. It's the Regional Planning Commission that's making them for them, trying to put it together. That money, according to the latest write-up, is coming from CMAC funds, mm -hmm. which is overlay funds used for state highways. And they're going to reconstruct the rail trail using CMAC funds, but not all of it. Only to the center of Hampton, and then from the center of Hampton to Hampton Falls, which is the worst part, because it's out there in the marsh, they don't know whenever, if that's going to be done at all, because there's no money to do it. Yes. We're talking millions of dollars out there and two yes. bridges. Yeah. So it's a lot of dollars and a lot of time, and they don't know where that's going to come from yet. And the reason there's the 180-day requirement on there is if you use CMAC funds, it's a federal requirement that the state uh -huh. has to be able to reclaim the road within 180 days, even if it hinders the town in some fashion. Uh -huh. That's just a federal requirement. So that's, that's why that's in there. What I really want to talk to you about is the, um, the Municipal Association is going to be mailing you a copy of the State Aid to Municipalities, the Histories and Trends, and I managed to get them to send me one so I could produce it for you for tonight. That's great. The other thing I've got here is a request. We currently have, just as this town, is about $90 million worth of unfunded um, state grants for water and sewer systems. And um, thank you. Thanks, Brad. Thank you very much. A bill has been filed, Thanks, and the information is on top. They would like people to sign on. Is that for the 20%? Yes, 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 for the 20%. Um, we currently have about almost $3 million worth of that money sitting out there. And, of course, it's not obligated because the state legislature is seeing fit to cancel that appropriation. They have not made it, basically, to, to fund that particular proposition. There is a bill. It's there on top. It's been submitted. Yeah. And the Municipal Association is asking uh, members of the legislature to mm. sign on and sponsor. And hopefully that okay. something will happen with that. Whether, even, even if it's just 10% of it, it's a help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fred, do you know who sponsors it? Tom 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 it Tom it's there. Oh, Buko. Okay, that's fine. That's good. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. That's well, my pitch. One last question, Mary Lewis. Yeah, I do have well, an observation on this Route 1, uh, Representative Edgar. <clears throat> Big problem on Route 1 is the drainage, 1A, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. The state owns 1A, and you can do your little patch if you want to and waste money doing that, but until and unless they're willing to correct the drainage on 1A, you are just wasting your money, wasting your money. And those potholes and sinkholes come from poor drainage, and somehow we can't get it through their heads. And the state owns that road from the east sidewalk 
all the way over to the west sidewalk. And there's a lot of damage being done there because of the lack of adequate drainage. And, and there was studies were going to be done as, as part of this, hopefully. That That's correct. Right. 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 right now, and part of that was for <clears throat> drainage. Yeah. One so, of the things that we're, I'm going to ask the board to ask the state not to pave it, not because it doesn't need it. It does need some cleaning up because it's in bad shape, mm -hmm. okay? But they, of course, have planned this. It's already past our budget time, and mm -hmm. we're talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to raise all the structures along Route 1A. It's not in our budget. Mm -hmm. So what they're going to do is just pave over the top of them. That's crazy. I mean, then you've got to yes. go back to dig the road up and raise all the structures. So something has to be done. I ran into the same problem up in New London when they decided to pave Route 11 up there. <clears throat> and we actually told them we couldn't do it because we just can't raise the structures because we don't have the money. It's the same situation here. If we default our budget, we'll be lucky if we have enough money to run the, the wastewater treatment plant. So it's just, just mm. the, the way things happen, plus the new legislation that was passed this year that changes 4013 uh, and how you work the default <coughs> budget, that's going to hamper us in many ways too. In mm. fact, we're going to talk about the default budget a little later tonight. So all those things need to be considered, but of course the state tells us after they've already planned all this. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so we have to find a way to cut corners and not do something that's in the budget that has to be done, mm -hmm. like maintenance or something or other, and take that money and use it for some other purpose. Lean and mean as we are, we can't afford to waste money like that. So it's, mm. it's really troubling. Doing it twice. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I just want to add one thing, if I may, sort of a generalization. The problem with I don't think that a lot of times people even know what Hampton wants because I know as a selectman I don't find out about things until the decisions are already made yeah. and then they want a blessing for it mm -hmm. from the board. I have a huge problem with that. I don't care whether they're, you know, they're not elected officials. It should come to the elected officials to make a legit decision mm -hmm. on anything that especially has financial implications to the town for the foreseeable future. You know, I appreciate RPC and everything they do. But at the same time, like that rail trail thing, I mean, Fred had issues with it from the get-go, and they originally had all one agreement, all the towns were on one agreement, and then because they didn't like the towns, you know, getting together and <laughs> aligning themselves with what they did or didn't want, now we all have whatever it is, five or six separate agreements. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just not how you get things done properly and that's pretty much what happens with everything that I've seen anyway since I've been a selectman and I mean that's why we filed the suit was because we can't get like this one-on-one -on -one elected officials elected officials way better way better Rusty one more quick one well we've got them here and I appreciate okay. them coming yeah. uh, the state well rooms and meals we're getting shortchanged to begin with yep. apparently we are the only state park in the in a state of New Hampshire that doesn't have roll-offs on the property to collect the waste and there is a monster volume of waste in that state park I think Regina said to me they do, it doubled this past year we are having all that yeah, waste our, go one. through the transfer station which wasn't built that for that we're having the Public Works Department which is overworked anyway dealing with all that mess. And I see no reason at all the state owns property. Why can't they put roll-offs, find a private hauler, and take away their waste? And the state does nothing in, way, in the way of carry-in, carry-out. No supervision of you put this here for recycling and you put that there for trash. The whole thing is a mess. I think it's disgusting. And I think it's time the state of New Hampshire got off its hind end and take, took care of his own waste at the Hampton Beach State Park. Yes, uh, over the, the course of the summer, you know, both on social media and walking down there myself, people are sharing pictures constantly about it. And uh, it is it's concerning that we have a, a lack of a it's real a waste management system, you know, uh, and especially with our staffing uh, difficulties, it right. would behoove us to. Uh, evaluate waste management systems both combinations of vehicles and receptacles yes. that allow for uh, it to be collected more quickly and uh, perhaps you know uh, 
greater capacity and less frequently and all these things would help to remedy a number of our yeah. challenges. Um, and we get crumbs uh, for rooms and meal mm -hmm. and, and the, Mr. Jacobs is back there going crazy with mm -hmm. all his staff yeah. trying to keep the beach clean and it's nothing but a dreadful mess. And I think they'll find it, it would pay for itself in short order in the sense that we're, we're paying for less labor uh, and we're collecting less frequently if it has greater capacity. And a less messy beach. That, that too. Yeah. Well, Representative, Senator, thank you for coming. Oh, what, no, one more thing. One of the things that, you know, for the past couple of years, uh, Mike and I have been doing is having office hours at the library. Yes. Um, because we invite <coughs> members of the, you know, public from the community. We want to hear from them. And we're, I know the four of us are committed to continuing to do that. And we invite, you know, Jason and Tom to come. And I, did you get a schedule February yet? February 9th. So, February 9th, mark, your, mark it now so you'll know that you can come meet with your Hampton legislative delegation at the uh, Lane Memorial Library. Excellent. Can we have on the calendar? Certainly. Yeah. What time? Uh, 10 to 12. 10 to 12. Saturday, February 9th. February 9th. Yeah. We'll have that put on our calendar. So again, if anybody's looking at our website or February our calendar, that, yeah. that would do that. Anything we can do to help you guys out? Thank you. Thank you. We're a phone call away. Yes. The uh, Hampton uh, Circuit Courthouse. Oh, yeah. Coming along is probably everybody seen. It's oh it's, good. It's yeah. really right now they're looking at the mid this month doing a uh, hopefully the occupancy permit will be able to be issued. Wow. They're going to start moving furniture in. And we don't again. issue that. I, yeah, but I was letting you know. <laughs> and, uh, and they're going to do the commissioning. They're going to be doing the commissioning, good. and then uh, hopefully they'll start actually maybe picking up business around the 22nd of January. There. Yeah, Excellent. Of they're going to be moving in. So just a little heads up. I just want to, <clears throat> I'll plan to be at the uh, the office hours, good, yeah. but I also, uh, unlike, I guess, we share multiple towns, uh, I have 11 towns in my district, so <laughs> it's a little hard for me to be completely on top of this, but I would encourage any residents, any of you all, to reach out to me if there's yeah. a place you need me to be or want me to be, um, I'll make every effort to be there. I'm happy to come back. Uh, as often as you need me to come to the Board of Selectmen meetings. My goal is to be available and advocating for the town along with the delegation in the areas where <coughs> that can really make a difference with your relationship with the state. Yeah. All right. Well, and Rennie and Mike are very brave yes. because I do go to their, <laughs> their <laughs> options, opportunities. Uh, Representative yes, Senator, thank you very much for coming in tonight. We really appreciate thank it. We look forward to working thank with you. Thank you for your time. Yeah, you, you, you can take that. Okay, you can you take sure? it. I'm, I'm already mad. Okay. So you <laughs> <laughs> Next one we have up is uh, Chris Jacobs, DPW uh, Director, and Jen Hale, Deputy Director. Talking about our Warren articles that we've got coming up. Good evening. Good evening. We have representatives with uh, Affinity Lighting with us here uh, oh, this good. evening because one of the articles that we'd like to discuss is uh, the replacement of lighting. Uh, I know it's a late. Um, Warn article to be submitted, but it's also a huge opportunity for the town. I'd like to start with that one first. Not with you? Sure. We After get I these. get done a brief. I don't normally have a message, but um, this year I thought uh, a message about the overall um, thought behind the Warren articles was uh, would be prudent. Several years ago when I took over as public works director, there was a common message from the members of government and the public that the public works department did not have a plan. That without any plan, the taxpayers and local officials could not collectively get behind war and articles and initiatives. For the f last several years, the overall plan of the department is presented in the capital improvement plan. Each year it is adjusted as projects get completed and others come to the attention of the department. While most items are known and can be quantified, some like the force main replacement were not known or planned for. We realize that these projects throw a little wrench into the gears and therefore can slow or stop the CIP. 
Regardless of the sp speed of the CIP, it is our duty as director and deputy director to keep our focus on the long range direction of the department. At the same time, we are ever vigilant of the risks and opportunities the town faces. For these reasons, you will see we are bringing forth for the town's consideration an article to bring larger water mains to our complex in an effort to address the fire risk. We take advantage of opportunities. We are also bringing forward an article to convert a lower power usage LED street lights and that have the opportunity to save the town $1 million over the next 10 years in electricity costs. To address the overall cost of these projects, we are also including opportunities to lease equipment when possible so to spread the cost of the purchases out over years. In the end, we accept the decision of the elected leaders to determine the final course of the department and for the voters to determine our speed. The men and women of the Public Works Department stand ready to serve the residents and vis visitors of Hampton. So having made that, um, if you will, brief opening, um, that was in part done because we realized that uh, fiscally it's a tough year. That not only did the voters approve uh, $11 million in a wastewater treatment bond opportunity last year, uh, work that needs to get done, but they also um, overwhelmingly, I think it was 96 percentage, uh, voted to back the uh, force main uh, vote in August. Uh, in my, I'm now 59, uh, moderator in another town, that's the first time I've ever seen or experienced a uh, town having to go back to the polls for raising a significant amount of money. Mm -hmm. um, in, involved in uh, reconsidering school votes in the past in a separate meeting, but that certainly was a significant chunk of money to be raised. But in keeping with that, I still believe that it's our responsibility, Jen and I, to uh, point the direction of the department, work with the town. Uh, to uh, forestall, if you will, or foresee through the CIP some of the issues that we face as a community. Uh, with that, I will go on to, because we want to get these young gentlemen home, so they, <laughs> <laughs> they have uh, meetings too. Uh, with Affinity Lighting, I have with me, and uh, so I don't slaughter names, uh, Mr. Steve Lieber and Mr. John Brannigan. And um, gentlemen, if you just, Maybe 15 minutes, give the board a brief overview as to what an LED light is and how and why we asked you to come before us. Yeah. Thank you. So first of all, thank you very much for having us. Our company, Affinity LED Light, we're based in Dover, New Hampshire. Oh, good. Uh, we manufacture the Cobra Head street lights that we've done in surrounding communities right there in Dover, and we hire U.S. veterans to do the work. Mm. We've been competitively selected on the seacoast uh, to name just a few towns. We're about 35 towns in Eversource territory, but you've seen our lights in Portsmouth, Dover, Rochester, Summersworth, Farmington, Greenland, Newington, Newfields, the list is long. Um, here in Unitil territory, uh, the town has a fantastic opportunity to uh, do your conversion and really enjoy great savings and a great benefit. Unitil's put together a good <coughs> business case. They haven't changed their tariff meaning how the lights are billed, but they've come back to offer a fantastic incentive program as well as an on-bill financing uh, opportunity for the rest of the project. Yeah. Um, so uh, Steve and I want to talk to you a little bit about that this evening and also uh, the basics, as Chris just asked, the basic of an LED is if you look at your current town inventory, some of your lights are fairly old. <laughs> you have uh, <coughs> mostly uh, high pressure sodium technology, which is that orange glow of light that you see throughout the community. You do have some mercury vapor, which is the whiter bright light. And uh, uh, you have older, uh, older technology, again, more mercury lights than we've seen in some other communities. <coughs> what that means is your savings potential is fantastic. If we look at an older, 100 watt mercury vapor light, we can put in a modern, locally made 25 watt LED. Those wow. kind of savings are fantastic. The lifetime of the equipment is estimated uh, well over 20 plus, 30 plus years, and it has a 10 year warranty uh, from our company as well. So really it's one of the few capital improvement projects that a town or municipality or city can face that has such a solid payback 
with instantly improving the quality of life, Good. reducing uh, maintenance and other hassles with aging infrastructure and aging light. Our product is also both Dark Sky and American Medical Association friendly. So if you've heard and seen some of the articles that are out there about what color temperatures and what kind of LEDs to use, we're in the wheelhouse of what your citizens and residents would be concerned about. We would make a good product. To touch uh, just briefly on the, 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 the top end numbers, uh, the town of Hampton uh, today, uh, under the current existing tariff on the legacy lighting, you're spending uh, about $217,000 a year to light your streets. Uh, <coughs> under the new tariff, uh, the LED tariff that is currently in place with Unitil, uh, the town would save 30%, uh, $65,000 a year. Um, by switching over to LED. That is aside from an incredible improvement that you'll see in terms of just the light mm. values quality. and the quality of light that is out on the streets. Um, it also represents um, on the, the, the green and clean side uh, almost 425,000 kilowatt hours uh, a year, which directly represents not only a reduction in carbon footprint for the, uh, for the town's contribution, but also those $65,000 in savings. The overall cost of uh, converting uh, the, the, to the LED street lights is $244,000. Um, uh, uh, there is also a net book value of undepreciated asset value that is uh, due back to Unitil of $148,000. Um, so all combined, you're looking at, um, you're looking at $390,000. We, um, we have worked with Unitil, as John mentioned, on a program. It is expected that Unitil will confirm for the town over $120,000 worth of incentives to support that. So you're talking about 30% you know, of, the, of the total cost of mm -hmm. not only the installation, but of the netbook value that is due um, to, uh, to Unitil. Uh, is covered by that incentive. So the <coughs> net cost, net net is $270,000. Now, as John mentioned, um, uh, well, first of all, at $270,000 with a $65,000 a year savings, you're looking at uh, just over four years to actually pay back the cost of the lights. That's the return um, with your savings. So these lights will pay for them themselves very quickly. Mm -hmm. And given the fact that over 10 years, which is our warranty period, you're saving 600 and almost $650,000. And the life of the lights at 1.2 million, um, it's a, a significant uh, benefit financially for the town. Uh, the last piece is, as John mentioned, I just wanted to to bring that up a, a little more. Unitil has put a, a unique program together that will actually uh, allow you to recuperate the costs almost immediately after you've spent them um, for installing the lights and also not to have to actually pay that net book value payment to, um, to the company, um, which we haven't seen before. Uh, we're, we're working with Central Maine Power um, uh, municipalities currently, uh, including just being awarded the city of Augusta, Maine, mm -hmm. uh, to put in a complete smart city for them. Good. Um, and uh, it, it's, a, it's an outstanding opportunity because they will take and recover that with the cost that you're already spending because it'll be on bill. So you'll basically be paying with your savings. Uh, the intention from, uh, from Unitil on those numbers, if you don't mind, John, no, yeah. take a look. The intention from Unitil is, um, to, put a, um, is to put a total of a $4,500 cost approximately on your bill for the cost of your um, for the cost of your lighting uh, that you'll be recovering basically back um, the both the investment that you've made and the net book value you'll be paying that uh, and come out approximately a thousand dollars a month positive mm -hmm. even with the new wow. equipment and that is for five years after five years you'll recuperate all the $65,000 savings. Mm. Uh, so it's a, it's a great program, uh, and, and certainly we, uh, we'd be honored to be able to support you. Uh, uh, John mentioned we've, we've uh, across the, the state of New Hampshire, we've already um, converted about 35 communities. Wow. 
Um, and uh, we've also been awarded the NHDOT project for highways and turnpikes that will be commencing soon as well. Mm. Can you just show what one of the lights looks like? So yeah. We, we brought a sample light to show you. We like to bring samples. Um, <laughs> and they didn't even fall down the stairs and break it. <laughs> exactly. I offered them the elevator. <laughs> so... So this is the exact equipment that we would be proposing to put up here in town. Oh my. Um, if you think about the old legacy street lights that you have, you're used to seeing them 25 feet yeah. up in the air. So they're actually about more than twice the size of this. Oh, yeah. This is a much smaller, low, lower profile. The LED chips, which actually uh, produce the light, are, are here with a lens. And what the lens does is help to reduce glare and direct the light to where mm. you need it. Wow. As I mentioned, uh, assembled here in Dover, we use components Whoops. from all over the world, Cree branded chips, Meanwell drivers, Wago power collect connections, and what that really means is kind of our intel inside, what makes it work, Ooh. and what allows us to give uh, a very good industry leading warranty of 10 years. Steve has a, a plug here, and we're going to plug this in and try not to shine it right directly at anybody. Some of these, you, you, they have some of these down the beach. On the state prop, they have some LED they do? lights. Oh, it's a different type of lighting, but yes. Yeah, it's a different type of lighting, but right. it, it gives you that similar. You mean know, like on the buildings? On the buildings and some of the, they have poles they have on the. On the hmm. Street lights in front of the, uh, the state park. Over there. Yeah. State park. Some interesting comments, uh, uh, including from uh, Vic oh. St. Pierre, who's the director of. Uh, of DPW over in the city of Claremont, which was one of the mm -hmm. first communities to convert uh, about three years ago, is uh, one of the comments that came from him was the, the stars have come back in the city of Claremont. John was mentioning about the um, about the, uh, uh, the the fact that there's zero uplighting and being dark sky compliant means yeah. that the light is only it's all directed by optics. Wow. Uh, it's lenses that actually throw the light where you want them, which is out yeah. on the streets and a little bit behind the poles on sidewalks for public safety, but uh, but not anywhere else. Wow. So um, so you'll see it's a fairly buttery glow. It's not uh, yeah, it's, it's it's not the orange uh, glow that you see with a, a fairly low <laughs> color rendering. Um, uh, Jacob Levinson from the city of Portsmouth took a picture of a five dollar bill under a high pressure sodium light on his iPhone and he had an orange five dollar bill. <laughs> was, Looks like a picture. Then he took a picture of um, the, the same five dollar bill under one of the street lights installed and it was a green five dollar bill so that the grass is going to be green again um, and uh, the color will come back to the town um, through, uh, through better lighting. That's amazing. Questions? Yes. Um, I believe when Fred was discussing this with us that, um, for one thing, don't say ornamental lighting to me, but um, <laughs> that we would get rid of, we're not just talking about, we're not talking about light bulbs actually at all, are we? And the fixtures that hold the light bulbs now would go. Right? The arms That's that you see sticking out from the poles, yeah. they would literally take that whole, what I call it, yeah. cobra head. It's cobra like head, yeah. They yep. take the cobra head off and they literally would put this right on the arm. It, it would only take three months to change out all the fixtures in the town. Right. I, yeah. I love it. Now, what what happens, I don't know, how, what's the life of one of those? The new fixture. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the fixture probably lasts, but... You sh you show that that thing underneath. The, oh, it looks like LED yeah, but it, plastic all, or something, right? Mm. Now, what happens when that runs out? Do you, is the whole fixture replaced, or is it? That's a great question. So we do have our ten year warranty. We mm -hmm. it, uh, anticipated life on this project again in about twenty seven years. Mm -hmm. Since we make it locally, if something happens to part of the components the lens, the driver, some part of it, mm -hmm. we can repair it locally. Um, that's one of the things we're fairly committed to. So we do encourage town to buy a few fixtures for a safety stock. Okay. If someone was texting and hit a pole and the light came down, yeah. you'd have another light to uh, put back up. 
and then if that one was still uh, serviceable, we could potentially repair it and replace it with. Uh, so it's not a problem either repairing it or after the 10 years or whatever it is, you can still get the same type of lighting. That's right. I love Serviceable this. parts. But yeah. the lifetimes, uh, the, the Department of Energy, because of what they considered to be a, a terrible failure of the implementation of compact fluorescent light, the CFL bulbs, mm -hmm. uh, put in some uh, pretty significant uh, requirements and rules and regulations in terms of development and marketing right. of LED technology. And we're required uh, to have these certified by the utilities okay. to uh, have third, all third-party testing done. And part of that is to, to certify the lifetime of them because okay. we use a, a, a high-end Cree LED chip. Yeah. Cree has to actually provide wow. the proof. Um, and uh, the, the fixture's rated at 120,000 hours. Wow. If you think about um, 12 hours a day across 20 years, these lights will burn in 20 years about 86,000 hours. Yeah. Wow. And, and what fixtures, what LEDs don't like, although you know traditionally, they don't like heat. Mm -hmm. um, we don't see as much heat in the Northeast as we see in other parts of the country. Yeah. And yeah. the other way that we've uh, we've worked to be able to extend the life of them, they're actually through this Energy Star uh, calculation that's provided. These are 260,000 hour chips wow. uh, because they're underdriven, meaning we we put less power through them yeah. than they're actually capable of of providing. That looks just like an ordinary little. I don't know, piece inserted. It's amazing that you'd get light out of that. Yeah. I love it. I Did love you? this idea. Well, you answered my question on the how long, you said three months for the project to get done. Right. So if it got approved in March, it would, could be done by the summer? Yeah. I mean, they've got mm -hmm. other projects they'd have to blend in, mm -hmm. but yeah. I love it. It could, it could be done throughout the summer. And mm -hmm. it would just go and replace whatever we have a regular light now, we'd have one of those? They just literally, if they've explained it to me, is literally take the Cobra head off, unplug, and plug this in. They're standard connections. Wow. Yeah. yeah, one of the additional things that we do is we work with Unitil. We get an inventory, the list in your town of what you've been paying for. And then we do a GIS audit. We go out and find every light in the street and make sure it's really there. Wow. Um, and then we take a quick glance at the map, make sure that everything looks appropriate lighting plan, that uh, you know, they're, they're, we found a few neighborhoods in Portsmouth that were really overlit, and we were able to save the town additional money by putting in a 25 watt typical residential type light where a 65 might have been the prescriptive one for one change if we had just followed wow. what the utility had in place. Mm -hmm. So we do that as well, that's part of the uh, cost that's built in. And then yeah, to Chris's point, we go through, we plan, we see what other work we have on the schedule and for 872 lights, we could uh, you know fairly quickly get through town being really mindful of school schedules, summer, you know, we know this is a tourist town and. Um, staying out of everybody's way when the revenue uh, is happening. So, thank you, Jim. Yeah, a couple of things. So the the the, the money savings great, the energy savings great, and and the uh, light not going up is great. I think that that's mm -hmm. a tremendous thing there. So I think it's a really nice ornamental light. I think it will include. The town. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that ornamental light too. But one of, one of the things you're mentioning right here is Jen knows why we're yes. saying this. Um, so what you're saying is now is the town will actually own the lights instead of Unitel owning the lights. Correct. Because I heard you say that the town would have yeah. a couple of spares. Right. Right. Yeah. Who puts those spares up if there's a problem? Is that Unitel or is it the town? It could be. It could be the town. It could be. Affinity lighting, it could be Unitil. Under the tariff, uh, under the Unitil tariff, the town will have the option to make that decision when the time comes, whether to service their own lights or whether to ask Unitil's uh, service uh, as I know we have provider. some street lighting down on C Street and some of the leaded streets for right. chance that we do it ourselves, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. With, so. We do with a hired electrician, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So they also have a suggestion about those, but that'll be in the future. <coughs> okay. We're going modern. Could I have something? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Chris, you've put together a warrant article, and uh, one of the the, the uh, appropriation for this year would be two hundred forty-five thousand two forty-one. 
Right. Is, is that a one, the one time uh, both uh, yes. parts and installation go into that? Yes. Sure. And on the chart that we were given, there's a, uh, on the uh, financial summary, uh, there's a 60 months copay. Is that right? Did I get that wrong? Mr. Lieber, would have to answer. That's correct. Your, um, your net book value, uh, the, so the, the cost is 244000 for installing for the equipment and the installation. Uh, we expect Unitil will, uh, will secure $122,000 in an incentive that would be a rebate back to you once the installation is done. Then they will also secure the, the financing for the balance of that cost, essentially paying you back for the other half of that cost by putting it on your bill for 60 months so you're paying with your savings. Uh, the combination of, uh, and then the second piece that they're adding is the net book value cost of 148000 that is due to buy out the undepreciated assets of the old equipment. You wouldn't have to write that check to Unitil. They would immediately, they would capture that back also across 60 equal payments. So in essence, you're not writing the $148,000 check to Unitil and they will Recap. They will capture that um, those funds across 60 months after the installation is completed, and then secondly, you will recover not only the cost of the rebate, but your copay cost of the project after you've paid us. You'll be collecting that back from Unitil. It's not a credit. It's actually a, in a check, and you'll pay that across your share, absent of the incentive, back also for 60 months. Net net, you'll be about a thousand dollars cash positive with all new lighting per month uh, for the, those first five years, and then then the the entire sixty five thousand goes to the bottom line after five years. Yeah, uh, when we, when a similar type of project was done in the Lane Memorial Library uh, with Unitil, un unfortunately it was expected, and and I think it did end up paying for itself with the mm -hmm. rebates. But nevertheless, the town was required to enter into a loan document as part of that program and whenever we get into a loan we end up having to present that in a warrant article mm. and I, I just don't want to f lose the fact that that this may not be the only piece we have to present depending on the document they ask us to sign yes and more m moreover if it's a loan document that binds future town meetings it may require a 60 percent vote and that did not that passed very well but we, we had enough time to deal with that, to put that article together. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to lose the fact that there may be an additional warrant article needed. Right. I do want, want to mislead the board that Mark has not had the chance to fully vet this and or had his um, mm -hmm. pen to the, uh, to the article. The actual verbiage, and I think that that's really important because we've done things like this in the past. If you call the asset management, uh, study that we did, or the asset management program, which was a $60,000 loan with principal yeah. forgiveness of 60000 mm -hmm. We still had to raise and appropriate the whole 60000 enter right. into the agreement and go back out the same with yeah. the um, pump station, uh, not the pump station, excuse me, the uh, efficiency at the wastewater the treatment DES plant piece. Uh, that we did. So sure. I am, I'm with all of you, and, and we hope, uh, Mark, you can go through and make sure that we're using the right language. Uh, on that warrant article for what will be the raising appropriate appropriate clause because we've also used as offset by like you'll see that in the paving grant one if we get money back mm -hmm. it gets offset by certain costs so that okay. the town when they see the warrant article yeah. sees that it's really a, a value and I, I also wanted to ask affinity uh, were you involved in the uh, lighting of the little bay bridge the Scammel Bridge, the yes, Scammel sir. Bridge. Scammel Bridge, yeah. thank you. Uh, You're every welcome. Every day, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's still paying for the electricity. I know. <laughs> we, we, we adopted the bridge. We, I um, know you did. We converted the bridge to LED and uh, working with, uh, with partners at NHDOT and the two direct involved towns, which were the town of Durham and the, and the city of Dover, uh, we were able to convert it over to an agreement, a public-private partnership 
that allowed us to adopt the bridge uh, in oh. perpetuity, let's oh say. My um, That's and uh, we're, we're, we're pretty happy to do that. Um, we, we've been very fortunate in the Seacoast area and across the state, actually. And it was just a nice way for us to, to give back. Yeah, wow. that, that beautiful bridge was dark for some, some months. And uh, I thank you every day. And, That's great. Uh, uh, and your uh, questions from the board uh, reference the infinity this, light. This is exciting. Well, one question I have is we have a number of uh, private entities in town, mm -hmm. uh, a couple trailer parks and stuff like that, that have their own lights. Is there a way to, for them to be able to buy lighting? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, luckily, being in Unitil territory, they have the opportunity to explore that with us. If you were across in uh, Eversource, not to pick on the other utilities, they don't allow for private area lights, the trailer parks of the world, to convert at the same time. So we would, in, we would encourage, if there are properties that we should look at, um, we'd, we'd be happy to work with. I think we have some private streets and some and the mm -hmm. private uh, mm -hmm. uh, we do. communities that w would really benefit from this, and I would think they would, they would probably like to be very interested in it also. No, it's great, and it's, it's also a really good exercise for town to have that consistency of color and lighting yes. quality. Yes. Um, I'm, re I'm actually just doing a joint project with the town of Henniker and New England College. Um, and I'm told it's the first joint project they've done in over 20 years wow. because they really believe in unifying the lighting in town, getting a good quality of light, and bringing that public-private mm -hmm. relationship in. Well, it, it's a different type of lighting, too. I, I, mm -hmm. I have two uh, LED lights that are on, one's on my barn and one's on my garage, and they light up my parking area plus part of the street out there, and, it, and it, it's a third of the cost or a quarter of the cost of what it used to be. Mm -hmm. And it's a much better lighting. So, wow. absolutely. Yep. So, all right. So, we we have this Warren article. We'll yep. let him go through it, and then we'll bring it back at another next week or something. Probably going to need a copy of the contract for you to tell. Yes, please. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So, I'd say if the if the town was obviously we understand there's there's steps and processes if the town's willing to uh, you know kind of to commit to the savings and the next steps. Mm -hmm. We would yep. make sure to bring in your Unitil representative. Um, everything that we've stated as far as anticipated rates and tariff, it is under a tariff or a law structure, so they would confirm our estimations of cost and savings and all that for you. Excellent. Yeah. Appreciate Good. Thank you. All right. Thank you, thank you very thank you much. much. Thank you for coming in and showing well, us the product. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having us. Moving on to the, is it the water line would be the next one you'd want to discuss? Um, the first one we have in our packet. Uh, packet vehicles. Is vehicles. Vehicles. Oh, oh lovely. So you might as well get right to the nitty gritty right fast. All right. Um, the, this is one of the, those uh, tougher articles where you look at it, or I look at it and say, um, somebody may be looking for a break um, in the overall uh, plan of the department, but uh, we do have to bring this forward. Um, there are several vehicles within this. One is a um, six-wheel dump truck with plow, wing, and sander. Mm -hmm. um, it would be replacing Unit 40, which is a 1997 International with 80,000 miles on it. 80,000 doesn't sound like a lot, but this is almost reaching a 30-year uh, vehicle. Um, so far this year, we've been nursing it along. Uh, it's only taken $3,000 in parts this year. Last year, it took $5,870 worth of parts. Um, but this is one of those mainline vehicles that we do rely on for snow removal. Um, we are also asking to replace a one-ton dump truck with plow and wing. It's unit 30. Um, basically, it has already been benched. Um, it cost us $56.90 in parts last year. The frame is essentially gone. Um, our lead mechanic, uh, Joe Gallagher, uh, recommended that we literally bench it. So uh, it is not available for, uh, I don't believe it's available for snow removal this year because no, it will not pass inspection. Mm. Uh, we're asking, it's, we've come around that the three quarter ton trucks that we do use for plowing uh, streets like uh, some of the courts, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Jones, uh, over off of, uh, I'm thinking of one Shaw, and then Beach Plum Way. Beach Plum Way can only be yeah. cleared with a pickup truck. So we do need some of them. To give you an idea, uh, Unit 26, a 2004 Silverado, 
83,000 miles on it. Um, in the last two years, for 5,000 in parts alone in the last two years. Uh, that's probably a third of its original purchase price every other year in part, every two years in parts. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Unit 16, a 2004 Silverado. It's got a whopping 115,000. We have spent in the last two years $13,500 in parts. We're literally rebuying that truck Yuck. every two or three years. Uh, we are looking to uh, replace two of our sidewalk maintenance vehicles. Units, if I've got the right numbers, units 53 and 63. They are these articulating track, sidewalk tractors. Um, I'll be honest with you, I'm not really fond of them. Why? Their original in replacement cost is between one hundred and thirty and one hundred and thirty-six thousand dollars per unit. Mm. Why would I try and clear track sidewalks with a unit that costs that much when I can buy a whole dump truck, six-wheel dump truck with plow and wing for one hundred and seventy-six? That'll do far more than these would ever do. Mm -hmm. The other issue I have is the two thousand four trackless. We're having very difficulty getting parts because these parts come out of Canada. Yeah. Uh, the, we've used so far in 18, $9,284 in parts to keep one of these going. Mm. Uh, the, the, um, the transfer in gearing between the, uh, the nice diesel motor out back and it's uh, to the power out front is really where these things fail. Uh, we've stripped gears. Uh, they're used hard, I'll admit. But uh, for $130,000, I don't think, you know, uh, this is where Mary and Louise and I agree uh -huh. that I should strate strategically look at certain pieces of equipment and evaluate whether or not for the dollars this town is spending, if these pieces of equipment give you the best value for your buck. At that price, they don't. Um, we've asked the dealer how much it would the trade-in value for him was, he said $500 each. Reason being, he has 26 of them in his lot and he can't get rid of any of them. Why? <laughs> Nobody else wants them either. Um, so um, there's something that, pieces of equipment that I can't honestly um, support anymore as a director. Um, what would you replace them with? Actually, we the companies of John Deere, Kubota, Bobcat and Wacker all make sidewalk tractors that basically they look like a Bobcat, a yeah. skid steer. Yeah. The great part is uh, you buy the basic unit for between lowest 50,000, highest 70, but you put a $9,000 snowblower on the front end of it. And when the $9,000 snowblower goes, yeah. you put on another $9,000 yeah. snowblower and keep right on going. Yeah. You yeah. don't have to. Um, Put nine thousand in parts in it that you can't mm -hmm. really get. Yeah, um, that's really what I would do, and I would be using those other pieces of equipment with sidewalk brooms on them to keep the sidewalks clean. I'd be using them with mower decks on the front. I'd be using them uh, to to mow the sides of the roads. I, they'd have far more versatility than these pieces of equipment do. Or a bucket. Or a bucket. Yes. So. Yeah, they have they have a lot more versatility than and um, I guess I've said enough about those. In an effort to um, look, again look at the overall cost, that biggest piece of equipment, the six wheel dump truck, um, I do have a cost of purchase at one seventy six, eight seventy two, but I have a five year price, uh, lease price of thirty eight seven eighteen. So literally we could pull off, uh, can't quickly do the math, but let's say 130,000 right out of this article if the board were to decide to follow the same tack that we did with the um, refuse trucks and that mm -hmm. is to lease them over a five year period. It would be a lease to own. And I understand the article would have to be rewritten with the yeah. back out clause in it. But that is your choice. 
I like the idea of leasing so we don't have old stuff kicking around and you can renew the lease or get lease new vehicles. Now, I've flagged six vehicles here, Chris, and the 5363, 2630, 40, and 43. Mm -hmm. um, now, what's going to happen to them? You're showing on 30 that it's already been benched. How all, all, these, get, all these get traded in. You're going to... They will, even on a lease, you can trade it in? Yes, on, with Mac, on it would be a Mac lease. They would take Unit 40. So I don't, you were not talking sure. John Deere and stuff. What? I was on the snow sidewalk oh. maintenance units that were oh, shown okay. before. Okay. But the Unit 40 would be replaced with a Mac. Okay, because what drives me crazy is the old stuff sitting there. You don't need it. You don't right. need it sitting on your lot. You want it out of your hair. I want it out of your hair. All I, the current I like this. steel, I call it, for, for rolling stock that is out back is already expected to leave the yard when the other equipment is delivered. Yes. yes. I like this. When we put together the one for the dump truck, <laughs> uh, there was a piece of uh, one of the international uh, yeah. refuse collection trucks that had been sitting there for four years. Yeah. It was part of the deal. They had to take the truck. They said, well, well it's not worth much. I didn't yes. ask you what it was worth. I just said, you so, have to give me a trade-in value on the truck, and they, they did. So when we get a nice new inventory list, when we right. get through this and get through the vote, yep. then a lot of these little tens are going to go bye-bye. Right. Bless you. Yeah. Thank you. I like that. And so the item you're talking about recommending as a, a lease to own would be in a separate article? So that it would, you, we could do it that way. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, that's, I believe that's the way we did it before. It was we yeah, broke it up. Yeah. yeah, but that again, and I bring these options forward. Uh, I don't get to make. I leave it to this board to make how how you want to present to the town how to finance or purchase yeah. these types of items. And to clarify, so if we go forward with this article as written, the dollar value needs to be four hundred and thirty-two thousand five hundred fifty-five. Try that again, Jen. It would be 432 three, two. Five, five, five. Five, five, five. We received uh, quotes as late as uh, yesterday okay. uh, for some of the yeah. trucks. So I want to make sure we have the right value for Good. keeping in mind that uh, this came up with other boards, Sanders, Plows, Wayne. It's all mm -hmm. inclusive. Right. Would, is there uh, anything with these that it, we might be better off to just sell them outright versus yeah. trade in? Well, for instance, on the, the two 2004 pickup trucks and, and the 30... No. What, what's happening is <laughs> if, when those go out to bid, and, and Liberty has gotten the bid in the last couple of times, and the reason why they get the bid is, for instance, I remember a couple of years ago, all, of, all the truck, all the bidders had a base value of 27, 27, 20. Everybody did. Then they, had, they were within cents on all the options where Liberty won the bid and others didn't. Liberty gave, gave us $2,000 for something everybody else was only willing to give us $500 for. So that is repeatedly happens with every one of those bids, okay. and that's why I keep these rust buckets, if you will, in the yard and uh. just don't ask the board to dispose of them as surplus and haul them to a junk dealer because the town gets more value as a trade-in during the bidding process. Well, and I'm just saying that the two trackless, I'm sure you can get more than $500 for them. Probably in the steel value alone. Right. right. That's right. why I'm saying it. I would, I would rather leave you the option. I would to, agree. To I think I that that's agree. where it's important, you know, the replaced vehicles to be traded in if deemed to be prudent by the public works director, the town manager, and the board of selectmen. Correct. I think so that's... So that that leaves an option for trading them and in I, I, I just think, not. you know, at $500, I mean... I think you could get more from this than the steel alone. Would agree. I think that's mm -hmm. what happened with the, the solid waste truck. It was worth more in steel than it was in mm -hmm. any other item. Um, yeah. I have a question. So we have a new number, 432555. And how much did you say the dump truck is the big item on there? One, it's like 180000 180000 Okay, so if we divided that over five years, it's you say it's going to be like 38000 the lease paperwork right here, if you want. 33718 is what they said. Oh, 33718? Perfect. So 
That would probably ideally be its own separate warrant article because of the way we did it last time. Correct. So we could take that this whole amount. Lease paper, oh, lease thank paperwork you. that we oh, got. Oh, nice. good. You see the five-year lease. Excellent. The, uh, second figure down. Oh, okay. Excellent. They do have a three-year lease option if that's what the town chooses, but. 38, sorry, 38, not 33. So we would only have to have, with the five-year lease, that 38, would... 38718? 38718 would be the tax mm -hmm. effect. For mm -hmm. this year. For this year. Right. For that... Now keep in mind that it takes almost nine months to get a truck, so this time next year, so that truck we may still be waiting for. Uh, right. So, but yes, it would be towards the end of fiscal year 19 when you would have to make that payment. So if that's in a separate warrant article, this 432555 is reduced by 180. Yes. 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 Yep. Could Chris, could you identify the numbers on the on these two, the six wheel dumps? Which unit one, unit 40 is the six wheel dump. Unit 40. There it is, right there. The, okay, the international 4900. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Good. And so they, on this lease, I don't see it has one of those non-appropriation clauses, but they'd be willing to do that? Yes, it would, it would probably be, be with the same Kansas City Finance Bank and Lending Authority that Mac uses. I have another question for Chris. You said that you have to wait for the truck. Would you, if we bought it, do you have to wait? We literally have to order it and they have to build the truck. Okay. It's not right. sitting in a yard somewhere. All right, good. The lease doesn't okay. make the uh, okay. waiting right. time le longer or less. All right. right. Okay, thank you. And you're talking five-year lease? That's, yes. Because yeah. you've got two options here. Given what we've been through in Warren articles over yeah. the last two years, yes. Good. I, I like that. Suggest. Okay. Okay. Wait, okay. Any other questions on this? Do we do we want to? Uh, I like the separate article with the lease and the replacing the other. Jim, vehicles. sorry. It's okay. Clean Chris, are you saying you're saying that that I mean these absolutely have to go? The, I mean, they do not absolutely have to go. Um, what my biggest concern is um, my maintenance budget. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you look at three lines that I'm consistently over by. Into the tune of uh, this truck at thirty-eight thousand is is a third of what I'm spending on maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, if I can start to get rid of some of these yes. older trucks, um, that's really where I can start to s we can start to save the town some money, Excellent. some real money. Um, we run a summary. Um, This is what, 18's numbers? Uh, 137,000 in parts this year, Wait. just to keep the refuse trucks cold. Yeah. So getting those two trucks arriving later this month into to next month will take a big ding out of that. I've got another article in here for refuse trailer. Um, I can lease one for 19,000 a year, cost me 14,000 in parts this year just to maintain Ooh. the ones we have. Ooh. So, um, so the longer we wait, all we do is we just put more parts into them and push the cost down the road. That's okay. Thank you. Having mm -hmm. just rebuilt an old four Silverado, I know how much they mm -hmm. the the bodies on them go, yep. and, the, and the frames go. They, they have a lot of frame issues, so I, I, I can see no problem with that. Okay. The other big problem is, and we, we come to it every year, is we had a wash down facility. We might get a little bit more out of these vehicles, but that that time and time again gets voted down you know if, if these vehicles had a wash down facility they could be washed down and get the salt off them also yeah. if we had the storage inside for them mm -hmm. we, we can do them right so. may, may i make a suggestion when you are at the actual deliberative session and you put the uh, you show whatever you're asking for on mm -hmm. the monitors and whatever if you could in a, in addition to showing the lease price or the purchase price for the new unit, show the cost of maintenance. maintenance. What it's cost us to 
keep the old crummy thing running. We will do that. Thank you. So do we want to move this article forward yes. knowing the fact that there will be a second warrant article dealing with the lease, uh, the lease purchase? I'll, I'll move both of them. Oh, Just one more ad that I'd like to be considered is that when we're talking about the sidewalk maintenance vehicles, because we have options out there mm -hmm. and because we're talking about two, yeah. uh, the two that we have that are significantly more money, um, if you had bought those new, then what we're going to be looking at in the future that we say up to two sidewalk vehicles because we want to be able to get two. the best match for our needs. Correct. Um, whether that's to replace whatever combination. To replace two sidewalk yeah. vehicles. Up to yeah. two. Up so to if two. we only get one and it's more than half the price that we put in there, we still have the other one to okay. use Good. in trading value. It just yeah. it keeps us... Uh, the ability to look at those attachments, Correct. maybe Good. get a better deal, be able to be more efficient with it. Good point. All right. So we have a motion and a second for two warrant articles. Who One. second? Right. The lease. I'll second it. Okay. There yeah. you go. Yeah, I, I have a, I don't have a problem. I say you guys need these trucks. I want them to get. I want you to get them all. Mm -hmm. I think we need to see the other one in the lease breakout, and I think whatever is remaining in this warrant article. We should take from the unassigned fund balance since a lot of this stuff should have been done a long time ago, in my view. So why don't we wait and get the wording back in right. these two articles yeah. as it's changed, and then we will bring them forward after that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. I just want to get past. Highway block rent. I'll move. I'll move that we put that on as is. The highway block ramp? Yeah, that's a routine. We have a motion to put that on. Yes. Uh, half half of it is being reimbursed yep. by the grant. All those in favor? Thank goodness. Unanimous. Easy enough. Road, and, I'll road move, Improvement Capital Reserve Fund. I'll move that. It's pretty much standard uh, 300000 to build up the fund. I'll and second it. Yeah. All those in favor? Unanimous. Yeah. Place a culvert system, Tuck Field and Park Avenue. So this one here, I know uh, last time you guys were talking about it, uh, Fred was fielding some questions for us. So um, it made me go, well, let me draw some maps here and sort of show what we're talking about uh, for each of the two drainage infrastructure projects that you're reviewing. Mm -hmm. uh, the culvert system for Tuck Field and Park Ave, if you can picture it, is basically the entrance, the one-way entrance in uh, to the Tuck Field parking area. Mm -hmm. There are, uh, in that, I don't know if it's going to let me, oh, it will. That's right. when I build a little kid's playground, correct? Yes, exactly. And if you look at these yellow lines, and I know it's probably hard to see, but you have this one across the bottom of the screen that comes here, the one that comes in this way, and you have two coming from the top. Good grief. Basically, all of this Ugh. comes into that culvert that goes under Park Avenue. And that culvert is an existing 24-inch uh, corrugated metal pipe. Uh, it is deteriorating. It has seen its lifetime flash by. It's also undersized. Um, I did this just to give you an idea of how much of uptown this culvert takes. <laughs> I mean, that one pipe is taking all of this and thus causing some of the problems oh. that we're having. <laughs> Uh, related oh to the overtopping in the Tuckville parking lot as far as uh, some surcharging out of the structures that are there. And they have that the problem when they, they built the new garage and surcharged it. Well, that and there's oh, probably... There's a picture of it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That could have been built up just a tad or more. <laughs> but, so that, uh, this has to do with that culvert that goes under This that. is exactly all that water that comes down through here. I mean, it connects to the drainage that's right here at Town Hall. I mean, so it's everything out on High Street, comes down uh, Academy Ave toll, uh, portions of Winnicunna, it comes through the field, includes parts of Park Ave, uh, both east and west. Also includes everything up to High Street. Yes. yes. So when we were looking at this culvert, uh, we started looking at what else would need to be done. Um, there is a sewer, the major sewer interceptor that goes right under it. So it's not as an easy fix as take out culvert, put in larger culvert. What we'll need to do is replace the structures uh, where these all join together into a larger structure and then replace with two barrels coming across and building a new head wall uh, at the outlet side. 
Um, and again, this goes back to something I've been saying, I think, in every meeting I've been at since I've been in front of you guys lately. To get Park Avenue paved, which is in desperate need of being paved, these are the type of things that we need to fix. Uh, there's this culvert here. Uh, and then also where I wanted to talk to you today a little bit maybe perhaps of joining these two projects. This is the culvert about, what, 400 feet down the road that comes from Kids Kingdom uh, in Eaton Park. Is that the 71,000? I just, 71.5. Yeah. Um, I just added it, 246.5. If we, I like to see this paired. I like to see the two yeah. projects on one article. And, and that's where I was hoping that we could do that. And I did put together a draft article mm -hmm. um, for us to read. Yeah. But again, it, Mark has not had a chance to vet it. Yeah. But the intent would be to take both and actually say right in there what they're we're trying to do. And, yeah, and this, right. this call that here is completely eaten out right at the water line, right? It is. This is an open bottom. You can see in the picture down here, yeah. this is an arched culvert. Uh, once you go into King's Kingdom, there's one culvert that crosses through with yeah. a one-lane car width. Yeah. We would be replacing that and then come down to this arch culvert. And the best thing about this arch culvert is that there's no real, what's the word? known path yeah we know where it exits on the other side we've tried mounting gopros to surfboards and sleds and snake pipes and cameras and it just needs to all be redone could i say one thing sure i'm very glad you came in tonight to talk about these because the voters i know they get very frustrated one because we have 50 warrant articles and we all realize yeah. why we have 50 warrant articles but they don't understand and reading this when we talked about it last week I was not getting any of this and I didn't ask that was my own fault but I think that's what people need to understand like if they have a question maybe they should just ask they can ask one of us they can email me mm -hmm. or call me whenever they want yeah and uh, and a lot of the times it does Mary Louise has said this quite a few times sometimes just seeing the map you know right. seeing exactly. the picture exactly where yes. we're talking about you know in this one where you can see you have the culvert that, that you picture. cross over and you see the yellow line and yeah. you know what we're supposed to do and right. you know yep. something when you see this this is how much drainage in town it takes and you know here's the other mess of infrastructure and that would allow us to take some of the roadway money that you know hopefully gets approved and be able to apportion that to park yeah. out the part i worry about this most is we have school buses that pass over that all the time yes all the time yeah. and with it being rotted out the way it is we just it's yeah. I'll, I'll move that we put these two together and lump sum. Two, I'll second it. 246.5. We were also thinking that we'd get a much better construction price if it was they were lumped one together. One project. Correct. It's one mobilization. It's Absolutely. one, yes. you know, one contract. So I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. That, this, that does include the head wall work that you mentioned. Yes, so that way, and it also yeah. one of the things very important about this when you're talking about an open stream bottom, uh, this is NHPES permitting. So this will take some engineering permitting, not just straight out construction. Will it be open stream it when you're done too? Uh, most likely the stream rules require that. Okay. Okay. So the next one we have is the Elaine yeah, sewer and sorry. drainage replacement. Yeah. So Elaine street drainage and sewer, basically uh, this is the infrastructure that if it gets done, it's uh, 1,100 feet of clay pipe. So this is the okay. old brittle pipe that is known to break and fail. Yeah. It replaces 500 feet of the corrugated metal pipe that's down at the bottom where Richards and Elaine meets before it goes cross country over to, um, towards the plant. Um, this allows us to do something very similar to the Anne's Lane. Uh, we'll do that work and then come back and pave Elaine Street, but also while we're right there, Richard Street, which does already have the PVC sewer, but is in horrific shape. The paving. Sorry. The paving. Okay. Okay. Questions sorry. of the board. Since Richard has the good pipe mm -hmm. already, uh, but stress that yep. in the article because I think it makes it more attractive to me understanding that you've already got the good pipe next door, and this will kind of unify the, the project. Yeah, yeah if, you, if you refer to Richard Street and, and the uh, nice plastic or whatever yep. pipe. Any other questions? Is, is this all failing or? Well, it's clay. Well, that, I yes, the, the clay pipe is, 
one, we don't put in six inch anymore. It, it would end up being an eight inch would be mm -hmm. PVC one to handle the capacity. But secondly, um, these projects, their secondary roles to address I and I. Is you yeah. may well know that over 60% of the flow that we treat in the plant is uh, just groundwater, stormwater related. Uh, if in the next sewer bonding round, we're going to uh, keep that project to, uh, uh, to what's truly necessary, if we have more of these projects to eliminate I and I, we can hopefully forestall the, the real need to uh, put in the two new aeration lagoons, the more, more expensive items. Mm -hmm. So what this not only does for me is, it, for us, is uh, secures the pipe for the next 50 years, mm -hmm. uh, allows us to pave the street, but also eliminates I&I &I into the plant. So Could that you just, I&I, &I, just so people at home watch yeah. it? Yeah, I&I is uh, inflow and infiltration. Um, every time it rains, like yeah. yesterday, um, we see a significant jump in the plant flow, anywhere from a half a million to, in some cases, two million gallons. Um, that's it's it's expensive to treat. Um, it keeps the size of the plant, uh, the operating size high, and it takes up capacity that otherwise could yeah. go to serve other homes, other good purposes, mm. rather than just groundwater. The clay pipes leak. Yeah. Thank okay. you. The, the, one, like. the one thing that I, I want to think, is this something that could, we could hold off one year for? Yeah. That is a possibility. We, again, this was part of our uh, CIP plan, mm -hmm. uh, similar way that we, you know, allocated for Lock Road and Winnicunit and Moulton and a few others. Um, yes, it is quite possible that this project could be, would it, would it be catastrophic to the town or the department? No, it would not be. My only concern is one, you've got a lot coming on on this year yeah. and yeah. this is a lot right now. You have a lot going on right now. I understand that. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I just want to overburden your department with this. Mm -hmm. There would be, you know, the, the lag is there would be some design time with this. This isn't something we, you know, open up the street tomorrow. In other words, a day after the. Mm -hmm. um, the only difference, I, I can look at it both ways. You know, if you were to say to me, which is which should come first, the chicken or the egg? We just talked about the Park Avenue. Park Avenue has two culverts. They're large, um, contributing areas that go to it, and also a road improvement that really needs to get done. Yeah. Um, this is smaller, but I just fear. You know, I don't want to send the wrong message that it's not important. Yeah. Because, and I don't either. Yeah, it, it's one I of those I don't either. Things. I just want to make sure that we don't overload it and everything gets turned down. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if that were the case, then it would be, you know, stressing the importance then our infrastructure project is Park Ave. You know, mm -hmm. let's really focus in on it and have everybody understand that it, it's this is the one we're doing this year. I tell you, ultimately, what I'd like to see, I would like to see a couple of, if not capital improvement funds, mm -hmm. but capital improvement articles every year knowing yeah. that we're going to spend yeah. 500,000 a year on drainage mm -hmm. we're going to spend mm -hmm. 500,000 a year on sewer right. Right. I would like to see that and then sort of like how the road improvement does you pick up what you need when you she do needs. that I would love to see that type of a, a setup but I make a motion that we hold this for a year I'll Se second it second all those in favor unanimous okay and you know I and that and Try to get where I'm coming from. Is oh, I, completely I would, understand. I think we we need to look at that over over the next year or two. Is is yep. to doing that, and having a million dollars, five hundred thousand for sewer, five hundred dollars thousand for drainage, Definitely. and we do that each year. Okay. I, the only thing about putting in a capital improvement fund is, then you have to vote to take it out of the capital improvement fund. Mm -hmm. Where if we did a warrant article each year, like we yeah. do the uh, the paving, then you'd have that available to the. Right. Understood. Understood. Okay, trailer. Objection I trash trailer. I have a tra is this an extra, Chris? It would be an extra. It would be an extra. Okay, so the how. I if they explain it first, yeah. then we can ask questions. Well, the reason for, me for an extra is uh, the three, the big weekends Memorial, uh, July 4th, uh, Labor Day, especially the July 4th one. 
I'll give you for instance, right now we might might take in 250 tons a week. Uh, July 4th, in two days, we'll take in 400 tons. Uh, the problem that we've had in the last couple of years is we've literally had to empty, we've, we've filled a trailer with recyclables, glass, plastics, cardboard, whatever, mixed. We've literally had to take it over to the next to the sand pile and eject the whole load on the <laughs> ground so that we can put yeah. refuse, i.e. that does need to go up to the landfill and waste management, back into that trailer because we have no capacity. So we literally will have uh, three or four trailers in the yard full uh, the, the day the, the uh, transfer state or the waste management's landfill opens and we'll have only one or two full of recyclables. And then what happens, and, and thankfully CWT, our transportation hauler, works with us. They'll be at the yard at 4 a.m. in the morning oh. hauling out a trailer God. so they can be first in line at 6 a.m. Mm. But then they're back at 9 so they can do the second trailer and back at 2 so they can do the third trailer. So it takes an extra ordinary effort on their part to get us back to where we have reasonable capacity. So the transfer station can handle more tons coming through per day. We can pick up more tons at the beach. I have no place to put it. Mm. And that's what this is to address. This is directly tied to a good economy on those <laughs> big weekends. Yeah. yeah, Chris, really quickly. Um, we're, we're not getting what we probably should get out of the state for the rooms and meals. Mary but they're Rumble. overwhelming us with, well, with trash. And is this causing a big problem for him? I have, I will certainly support this article, but uh, we are being um, messed up six ways from Sunday by that We have state. a motion by Mary Louise to accept. We have a second. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Place the water line to DW, uh, DPW facility. Get the sketch up. I do. I got a little verbiage to read. <sighs> Water line. Last year, I noticed that the water usage for the wastewater treatment plant area was going up each month. Mike Doobie looked into it and was able to isolate the leak to the one inch water line between the plant and our offices. During the summer, we did dig up the line in an effort to isolate the leak. Given the overall length, it would be much easier just to replace the whole line. Mm -hmm. we, yeah. we dug holes where the water line was. We never found the leak. Um, in looking at our overall needs, I'm drawn to the need to also alleviate the fire risk in our office and garage area. Mm -hmm. I am reminded of the fire that destroyed the Henniker, New Hampshire Public Works garage back in January of 15. It destroyed five snowplow trucks and one grader with a combined worth of over $1 million. We do not have a sprinkler system in our garage slash office building. Uh, we currently have 15 pieces of equipment in our garage stored there uh, with a replacement value of $1.8 million. Uh, to address this issue, we've met with Aquarian Water with the intention of looping two mains they have bringing an eight inch main and hydrant through from their northern line uh, to our mm -hmm. facility. The first phase of the work will be to install just 540 feet of an eight inch water line right to our, our building. Uh, future phases would address the rest of our facility. Uh, we're talking with them about um, the overall cost to loop uh, the water line between Tide Mill Road and this line that you see on the northern part of our site. Go ahead, Mary Louise. Yeah. Um, you talk, you mentioned a one inch line. I hope this might be bigger than one inch. The new one will be eight inch. Ooh. Okay, the new one will be, will be 540 feet of eight inch main. Ah. And we would end up with a hydrant in our yard uh, over by the carpenter shack. Oh, great. This okay. location would then make it, uh, if there was ever a, a building expansion or 
a major improvement to our highway complex garage, uh, this would be used for that. And I mentioned to Chris on his way in just to kind of confirm for me because I'm I'm concerned about all the stuff that's on the Public Works lot. But apparently, um, Public Works does have a diagram or a plan or a plot or something showing where all the lines go. So that makes me feel better. Yep. The only thing that this line would conflict with is a, the sewer interceptor that comes down Pinneman Lane. Well, from Richard and it won't cross over. It waters Richard on the and Lane. Yeah. Water's on the other side. Uh, the only okay. thing this will conflict with is the ledge that's yeah. already there. <laughs> We've dug a number of test, test pits, pits off the backside, exploring multiple paths, and this is the path with the least amount of ledge. Okay. But we would have some ledge to get rid of, to get the line down five and six feet as required. So again, you know, as I said in my opening statement, this is one of those things, well, I could avoid it every year and just keep paying a little higher water bill. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's what you really want me to do. Right. Uh, secondly, I don't think we should avoid the issue of mm -hmm. we could lose our public works garage. Yeah. It has happened in the past to other departments. Yeah. I believe if it's, uh, you know, there's another one that happened this week. Danbury. Danbury lost Danbury. their public works oh. garage. <clears throat> Yeah. Well, all I wasn't aware of that. So, yeah. Yeah. I knew there was another one that happened shortly. If they yeah. had a sprinkler system, they might not have yeah. lost so much equipment. Right. And, and in the in the Henniker situation, and rereading the article today that's online, uh, they had finished plowing. They put all the equipment away. Mm. Uh, an hour later, they were called back. Or hey, uh, and the garage was fully engulfed, and nothing wow. was was safe. I'll move to put this uh, on the warrant as sure. is. Second. Yeah. Second. I have a question. Oh. How much extra is the uh, water bill? I mean, right now, we're probably talking. It had tripled in three months, so it went from 200. It's probably up to 600. Okay. Yeah. And if if you had a fire at night with the trucks in there and stuff, just approximately, the loss would be how much? 1.8 million dollars, not okay. including our office okay. loss itself. So we're t we're talking 85 thousand dollars. Now, this doesn't to, put in a fire protection system. It does not put the system in. It's the first, phase, right? first it, phase of it, right. correct. Yeah. I just want to make sure that that's yeah. known, but right. it also puts hydrants there that are a lot closer if the they access. did need water yeah. until we're, Right, yeah. yeah. Right, so. Yeah. So yeah. we're starting to protect. Right, right. And, and by the way, not that the department, this, I have, as director, I've only been, what, director four years, five years? I've seen three fires in the complex. One in the electrical panel in the garage yeah. during the day. One in the carpenter's shed that occurred overnight was found at 6 o'clock in the morning. And one was in a transfer trailer my first week. Yeah. So yeah. fire is a r real yeah. uh, nemesis for the department. Absolutely. So we have a motion and a second. Yep. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next one we have the sidewalk capital reserve fund. I would frankly take this out. I think we have more to worry about right now than sidewalks. I like to see this be in there, but come out of the unassigned fund balance, which is something that's going to need to be done. Probably, maybe we can. We're going to start doing this every year, right? That's what that's what a capital reserve fund will do. Right. So, yeah. can we initially take a hundred thousand out of the unassigned fund balance to start it, so we don't have to? Have right. Time Oh, you can take anything out you want. Just you're going to eventually deplete the amount of money right. you need. Right. Um, you got to be careful on how much you take. That's right. All. I'd move to hold this for another year. I, I can't support this. Do we have a second? When, can I hear from yep. these guys what they think? Well, sure. In jumping on what the chairman said earlier, um, <clears throat> I think we need to, you know, a, each year there has to be an effort to address the mm -hmm. major points within the town mm -hmm. be it wrote you know we already have um, the paving line we already put away 300,000 for major capital improvements mm -hmm. that we you know that in the future we come up with a um, sewer line and what was the other one you had? oh drainage drainage something. in listening to not only this group but other members of the group governmental functions budget committee in particular why not have a capital reserve fund for it uh, for sidewalks that way because twenty five thousand to be honest with you we're not 
We're not even painting them. We're not getting anything done. You know, one, we had, when we did have 85,000, we had a hard time finding a contractor that would come in for that little, what they considered measly yeah. amount of money. Yeah. So the effort of 100,000 was to then have a concerted fund with which to make some improvements from. Secondly, the reason why it's title and ADA compliance is mm -hmm. anyone who is aggrieved by the Americans with this, anyone who is aggrieved by disability access issues, and you don't have to be disabled, can sue the town over Americans with Disabilities Act. We are behind when it comes to the repairing, upgrading, replacing the number of handicapped ramps we should have especially at the crosswalks we already have. Um, so there again, being the captain and vice captain of this ship, <laughs> we have to make people aware that this is an issue that we think should be mm -hmm. And one of the other addressed. just costly parts of why we have such a hard time doing it is that many decisions have been made prior to us where concrete sidewalks were paved over. So my demolition and removal cost of sidewalks that don't comply currently is one and a half times the amount it normally would be just to get it to a base <clears throat> so we can start over. So while you brought that up, what's a better way to go? Concrete or asphalt sidewalks? Depends where it is. Depends on where it is. Right now, we look at the downtown area as concrete Concr sidewalks. Yep. Mm -hmm. And as we work our way out, the two minutes due to maintenance, the, the ability to repair those type of things. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. What have we done with our concrete sidewalks to uh, keep them uh, functioning properly? Aren't we supposed we to stick paint with the... them or do something with them That's each year? Well, I can simply answer sidewalks. the last sidewalks we repaired were the, replaced were the ones right outside this building. And yeah. as the season closed down, they were replaced early in the summer. Yeah. We sealed them with sidewalk with concrete sealer. Yeah. And any so, planning board project that goes through, they seal theirs yeah. with it. But, so as they're getting built, they're getting sealed. Yeah. But referring to the, and I appreciate what you're trying to do. You're fulfilling your responsibilities. But I'm, I figure that we're being funded to death. I'm getting a little tired of having to set up funds all over the place. And uh, when um, John Muxie's daughter was killed January, oh, years ago, because she was running at night, at the end of High Street, and uh, there was a big excitement about putting a sidewalk there from Five Corners to Ocean Boulevard. And we put it in, and it's ADA compliant, and people don't run on it well, we because can't it help goes how up and down, up and down, up and down. We still oh, have I, to supply sidewalks and have I, to supply I, a safe pack. If they choose not to use it, well, that's their own peril. But this is. Yeah, I, I'm not power. in favor of putting this on Virginia. the wall at all. Yes, one, I'm in favor for this article, whatever the board, however they want to appropriate it, I don't have a problem with. We need to look at this stuff. I think funding a capital of a, uh, improvement fund for it, this way people know it's something that we're probably going to do every year. They're aware of it. It's never going to go away. The budget increase to public works, can you refresh my memory as to how much of it was it contractual or due to uh, wages? It was a very small amount. We pretty much asked for nothing it this was, year. Yeah, the contractual portion uh, or contracts, right. not only labor but physical work contracts, 85% uh, and 15% uh, to, if you will, uh, decision items. But right. a portion of that was even gas and fuel. I mean, everything so. we just talked about, it's all infrastructure. It's all stuff that's Correct. never going to go away. Correct. It's like pay now or pay later. I you make know, a motion I, that we move this. Yeah, forward. I'd like to say one more thing. Okay. I'm getting threatened by the budget committee every single week that we're going to have a default budget. Well, I'll tell you right now, if this town's got to operate on a default budget, there's going to be some serious problems. So I just want to mm -hmm. let everyone know in the public that people need to get all the information in to the total amount of information and if they don't like the response from the town manager who is doing what he always does his job then you know what maybe they should decide how to run a town themselves because I'm really sick of 
you know, we got to be the bad guys, we're always the bad guys, and then they can sit in those meetings and say whatever they want about us, and they're going to take it out on public works, because public works is what suffers the most in this whole town. Mm -hmm. So I am full with what you want and however you want to do it. And I agree. I think we should have these things. But this way, doing it this way, it allows the voters to decide. Mm -hmm. At some point, we can't, I agree. you know, people have to make up their own minds. Yeah. But they have to make that after they're educated. And I think you guys do a good job of educating. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Out of the post. Three, one to post. And the hazardous waste collection. No, you next one is the Molten Road sewer replacement. Oh, see, they got my pages got mixed up in here, I think. Okay. Once again, I, I'm not going to favor that for a vote this year. Um, I, in all honesty, I didn't put a slide together for this one because I had watched the last meeting and I thought you guys had uh, decided not to move this one forward. But the long and short of it is Molten Road. It does not have a drainage system uh, so this project would put one in uh, it would rebuild all the sidewalks along Molten Road mm -hmm. it would also replace all the sewer again it is a clay sewer uh, that goes top to bottom yeah. collects everything on Molten and brings it down uh, to us at the plant uh, it did come with quite a price tag um, at the bottom of the Warren article I tried to give it to you in perspective yeah. because it is longer than Anne's Lane, because it is more pipe, because it is more of everything uh, to do it and to repave it. Uh, it came in at $989,750. I make a motion that we don't move this forward. We don't I'll move second. forward. I'll second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Now you're at the household hazardous waste thing. Uh, I think some of my I don't even have that one on here. I thought we sure. we, we approved that one last time. Yeah, I gave them back. I gave all of them back to you. Maybe they can get copied someplace. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe we passed this one last we did. time. Well, yeah. we agreed, but I right. thought that we were waiting until tonight to do. Yeah. All right, so I'll make a motion that we pass this Second. one. Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Yeah. Unanimous. Um, Fred, there's a typo in the. I think that's yeah. all of yours. Okay. Yeah, that is. Thank you guys. Thank you very Thank much you. for coming Thank in. You. We really appreciate it. You, you gave us a lot of insight, and I think that certainly helps. Yeah. And as we move forward, we will be we will be uh, asking the voters uh, yep. and asking you to inform the voters. Yeah. Right. So Definitely. we look forward to that. Get some good slides in the deliberative session. Okay. No, okay. Thank you very much, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Next one's up, we have uh, Jay Diener and Rayanne Dion yeah. talking about Thank climatization grant flooding issues in Hampton. This looks really really we don't have any flooding in Hampton. Do we? Thank you. I think Thank I you. got mine. Are we done with the Warren articles for tonight? No, no. we got them coming back afterwards under uh, oh, okay. old business. Okay. So, yeah. well, we're going to take a little break from Warren articles <laughs> to discuss something else, <laughs> okay, and we'll try to be good. brief. Okay. Um, we're here tonight representing the Seaport Camptons Estuary Alliance, um, and a project that we've been working on that we'd like to get um, your involvement in and. I'm going to give you a little bit of background on, on the project itself. Um, as you know, uh, earlier this year, we, in conjunction with the New Hampshire Coastal Program, held a series of three workshops regarding flooding issues in Hampton. Um, as in part, as an outgrowth from that, we found out about a grant that was being offered by the Consensus Building Institute in Massachusetts that we applied for again with the New Hampshire Coastal Program and we were awarded that grant. And the grant is coming through the Climigration Institute and the grant is to start the process of investigating flooding adaptation uh, strategies and tactics for the town of Hampton. Um, what we've done so far with that 
is we um, is, is with the funding that we received initially, we hired an independent planner who worked with us to develop a survey uh, that we distributed to town residents and municipal officials in Hampton. And what you've got in front of you are the results from that survey. Uh, we had about 70 people respond to the survey and it covers a wide variety of issues all related to flooding. Um, you'll see how many of the respondees have properties that have been impacted by flooding, um, how many of them have flood insurance, um, there's information about who they feel should be responsible for dealing with flooding issues, and is it the property owners, is it the town, is it the state, is it the federal government, or is it a combination of those? Um, there's information um, about their opinions about whether or not vulnerable pro properties should be rebuilt. If, if properties are flooded on a, on a repeated basis, should they be rebuilt or should be something else be done with them? Um, we talk about, uh, there is information about long-term adaptation planning. There's information about uh, what we've called voluntary buyout programs or managed retreat. Mm -hmm. um, there are comments about what people envision their town will look like in 50 years from now, um, as well as um, what the town should be doing about flooding issues and what long-term adaptation planning should be. And so that creates a situational assessment for this project, it gives us an understanding of what the town, what your constituents think about flooding and what its impacts are to them and what should be done about flooding issues. Um, and it's great information to use to, to start the process with. So we conducted the survey. We also conducted a number of one-on-one -on -one interviews with some municipal officials to get their perspective as well. Hmm. Um, and that takes us to the next step of this process. Um, and Rayanne's going to tell you a little bit about that and, and what we're looking for from the board this evening. Sure. So to continue building upon uh, this grant work, we are looking to form what we are calling a Coastal Hazards and Adaptation Team, or by its fun acronym, CHAT. Uh, the purpose of this group is to help guide and inform the development and implementation of a fundable coastal adaptation planning project for Hampton. Um, the group would be composed of municipal staff and board members. Uh, we all know that community involvement is critical to the success of any town planning project. This is why we see CHAT being a key resource for engaging the community and helping to build support for those flood adaptation strategies that best address the flooding in Hampton. Lastly, we would like to see this effort evolve into a long-term planning process that helps our community better understand and implement coastal adaptation strategies to cope with coastal flooding from high tides, storm surge, and sea level rise. Um, we are in the process of talking to other uh, boards and commissions. Um, so far, we have a member of the planning board that is joining us, as well as the town planner. Uh, we look to have uh, the first chat work session in early January 2019. And so we're here tonight to see if uh, one of you would be interested in participating in that group. Mr. Chairman, I yeah. would be interested in participating in it if it was the uh, will of the board. Fine, by the consensus of the board. Yep, sounds fine. Yep. So, Regina will be. Excellent. So. Great, thank May you. I ask a quick sure. question. I've <coughs> been receiving uh, some questions from senior citizens, many of whom do not have a computer. Mm -hmm. They'd like to participate in the survey. Is there any way we could put some kind of cards, perhaps in the, in the, uh, you know, planning office or someplace so, where they could just pick out a, a little card and fill in the questions and. Yeah, so we tried to accommodate that. We did have a limited budget, so we couldn't do a massive mailing, mm -hmm. um, but we did have it available <coughs> at the library, and it was also available in town hall, hard copies, so people that came into those venues um, okay. could take them. Our so. town hall might be an easier access if you yeah, could have a little, 
yeah. a little container. Yeah, I had a big coaster that and you could <laughs> fill out on the spot and then put there for you so you could. Yep, sure. and there, there was are people interested. They want to make their thoughts known, but they feel. And Mary Louise, they do have that upstairs. I had it upstairs. We had did. It. Yeah, the survey is completed now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we did have but they had that upstairs. Mm -hmm. Well, but I didn't know that, and a lot of people obviously didn't know that because they're telling me they want to be able to participate, and they don't have a computer. So well, that's why they, I, they ought yeah. to call and ask yeah. Ray yeah. Ann, and she could have told them quite simply, we, or you could have asked her, and she could have told you yeah. while the survey was still going on. Well, when you have a future survey, and, you know, absolutely, we didn't uh, let try to us take know that. And I'll be happy to. Sure. Share the information. Okay, so we'll have we'll have uh, Regina as, as yeah, thank you. our representative. That's from the good. Board. Could I just say I like I actually met with Jay the other day to talk about this a little bit, and uh, I like how the first thing you told me that we need to do like a situa a situational assessment right. of everything that's going on mm -hmm. because we got flooding you know in one place for certain reasons and maybe mm -hmm. somewhere else for other reasons. So I think this chat. I don't know what it stands for yet, but <laughs> Coastal Hazards and Adaptation Team <laughs> is going to be a really good way to get all the not only just boards but yeah. public works. Like it really affects the Board of Selectmen, Planning Board, Zoning Board, mm -hmm. uh, Village District, and obviously our Public Works Department. So mm -hmm. hopefully, a group like this can get everyone together and. So by chatting, you'll figure it out. Chatting, exactly. <laughs> that's the whole <hope. laughs> So yeah, thank you. We appreciate the fact that um, there are people like Regina and other members of, of the municipal staff who are willing to participate because we mm -hmm. think giving you an understanding of what the issues are and what some of the options are um, and having input from municipal staff is really going to be critical mm -hmm. to the success of this process. Mm -hmm. So we really appreciate your support. While we have you guys here, we have a warrant article for twenty thousand dollars to be placed oh, in the conservation right. commission fund. Mm -hmm. but not to and I hear you want to. I got a letter here saying you want to increase that. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we so, kind of want to modify it. Okay, so um, can we, while we got you here, now is probably a good time to talk about that. Because they have a specific plan on this, which oh, is good. Yeah. Okay, um, we're happy to talk to you about that. Um, the reason we want to change that warrant article is because we have a specific parcel in mind mm -hmm. um, that we'd like to acquire on behalf of the town. Good. Um, right now, today, we have not, Rayanne has reached out to the property owners, the current owners, but has not gotten their approval to go public okay. with who they are. So we can give you so, some basic information. Yep. Um, but not all the details of Correct. it, but certainly well before town meeting and the deliberative session, all of that will be available. So okay. do you want to have this now and then bring it back at the deliberative session to increase it? Or is um, I, you're, I think you're it's saying by the change. time yeah. by the time that the selectmen have the yeah. warrant to finalize, which is January, first week of yeah. January, Fred? January 8th, the last day petition articles. Yeah. So, so you're I saying by it, that time? I have it drafted. It's drafted and ready for your review. I just finished it today. It's just we were waiting to hear back from the property so owner we'll so that we could release the we'll map and lot. Before the 8th. Yes. Until we hear from okay. you guys, we'll, we'll hold yeah. off on that one. Excellent. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. May I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh oh. Um, <laughs> It regards, and, and I think you're going to discuss this later this evening, I'm not sure, but your meeting schedule for the rest of this calendar year? We've already have our meeting schedule. Oh, now we're going to discuss it. Oh, for next year? Yeah. Right. Not no. this no, year, the rest no. of this, no. year. this year. For the rest oh. of this year. around the holiday. Okay. The rest of this year, we, we've already done ours. They're, You've they're got two they more Mondays. something approved. Okay. That uh, it won't come to fruition until after your meeting on the 17th. Do you have That's a meeting the following thing. the 17th? We should. It's provisional. Well, one's it's provisional. Christmas Eve and one's... Wait, no, You're meeting not. on the 27th. It's just Open case. Yeah, we have a provisional meeting on the 27th. Right. Okay. If we need to have that. Okay. So... So we... If, I, if you're telling us you can't get it by the 17th... <laughs> we can't get it to you by the 17th. Yeah. We meet on the 18th. Um, we have to have a public hearing before we can come to you, and our next meeting is on the 18th. Well, we can have a short meeting on the... Yeah, we I can, mean, I we can, can always schedule a meeting. We can always schedule a meeting if we have to. You're Even not, on we, that day, we already have blocked off. Yeah, so. 
We can. I'm here. Yeah. So we yeah. can we can yeah. schedule it. Should we work through Christina to? Yep. Coordinate with you folks. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Good. Appreciate that. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay. Tell me I was just report. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, citizens may file petition to warrant articles until January 8, 2019 with the Selectman's Office. Uh, please submit them early if you can. Uh, very often petitions will come in, they'll be verified, and they don't have the required 25 legal voters signing it. If it's before the deadline, we will call you and ask you for additional signatures. If not, it, uh, the article just simply will not make the warrant. Work progresses on the installation of the new sewer replacement line from the wastewater treatment plant on Route 101 via Tide Mill Road. Please be extremely careful while driving in the construction areas. The contractor's employees as well as town employees will be in the roadways. Uh, construction is projected to start on the Church Street Force Main and the Church Street at the Church Street Pumping Station this week. Please be mindful again of the potential for detours and roadway closures, mm -hmm. as well as employees being in the roadway. Yeah. Individuals concerned with the accuracy of their property tax bills should check with the assessor's office. Abatement request forms are available there. They will need to be filled out if you're going to file an abatement. Individuals wishing to file for veterans, blind, solar, elderly, or other exemptions must do so by April 1st, 2019. The necessary forms for filing are available at the assessor's office. Please file early so that your application can be timely filed. <clears throat> Their uh, personnel records, personal records uh, are required in some cases and they may require time to review and, and verify. And that includes, uh, for in some cases, depending upon what type of exemption is filed for, your federal income tax return as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the Department of Public Works is going to hold two public meetings uh, regarding highway flooding problems. The first one is for the Meadow Pond Kings Highway <coughs> flooding problem area. That's going to be held on December 10th at 6 p.m. in the town hall, which is this meeting room in the basement, the Selectman's meeting room. The second one will be on December 11th at 6 p.m. in the Hampton Police Station. So those concerned with flooding in those two areas are cordially invited to attend those and to uh, try to work with us in, in, in trying to get things put together properly so that we, mm -hmm. can, uh, we can move forward with everything that needs to be done. Yeah. I've also given the board, um, prepared by staff, a complete set of uh, regulations dealing with parking yeah. and a list of all the winter parking leases and parking requirements for leases in the winter time. Mm. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Very nice. Any questions of the nope. town manager of his report? Nope. Thank you. Jenna? Nope. Okay. Go on to old business and we'll start with a default budget. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. How are you today? It's not morning yet, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so the default budget finally made it into your boxes late this afternoon, and I did email it out to you. Um, let me just get to the right page here in my book, and I'll give you all the totals and all of that. So the 2019 board budget that is before uh, the budget committee right now is $28 million. $192,606. The default budget that is presented to you tonight totals $27,594,483. That amount is $598,123 lower than the um, 2019 proposed budget. Right. And it's $752,171 higher than the 2018 budget. Um, so it's up 2.8% over the 2018 budget. <coughs> the first two pages that you had in your packet is a summary of all of the changes, all of the um, line items that changed from the 2018. You can see that the uh, large 
largest um, portion there is made up of wage accounts that are a result of collective bargaining agreements or changes approved by the governing body. The second section is the benefit lines. They're related to wages and therefore fluctuate with changes made to wages as approved by collective bargaining agreements and the governing body. Health insurance uh, is related to the rate increase that we had from Health Trust, mm -hmm. and that's for the municipal section and the library. Life insurance, there is uh, an increase from 18 cents per thousand to 21 cents per thousand. Mm -hmm. That's a policy that's required by the, for the employee by contract. Employee benefits are related directly to the collective bargaining agreements that were previously approved by the legislative body. So in that section, you see your holiday pay, career incentives, uniform pay. Those are um, everything in that section right there is strictly linked to a collective bargaining agreement that was approved by the legislative body. The line item for, let's see, what is this for? This is for the regular wages in the police, uh, the detect crime, or the detective section of the crime control section of the police budget. That's from the funding that was approved by the 2018 town meeting vote in Article 3 of the school district warrant for the new school resource officer. Mm -hmm. The new equipment in fire is the next one. It's reduced to zero as in 2018 the budget amount was to purchase hydraulic tools for engine four, which has, was a one time expenditure, so it cannot be in the default, so that has been removed. The rentals and leases in the solid waste collection is the represents the funding approved by the 2018 town meeting vote uh, in Article 13 for two Mac cab over trash trucks. That's mm -hmm. the lease there. Yeah. And then um, Exeter sewer agreement. The legislative body approved the Exeter sewer agreement increase related to Exeter billing in its. The increase is related to the Exeter billing rate. Yes. And then the last two are debt principal and debt interest, which we all know is yeah. only incurred once the legislative body has approved mm -hmm. some type of bond article in the past. Right. So that kind of gives you your summary there Good. of the changes. So that's what we have brought. Fred and Jamie and I have, and Mark too. Sorry, Mark. Mark has been involved too. But Fred and Jamie and I did the final reviews of this today. Yeah. Um, and we feel that we have brought forward mm -hmm. Good. to follow along with what the Municipal Association has recommended and shown us in their articles in town and city and trainings that we've all attended. Mm -hmm. Any questions? No, thank you very much. I have just a point of clarification. So these first two pages are outlining every single change from Hopefully. The default. <laughs> well, to I'm the sure. best of my knowledge, to the best yes. Of your knowledge, I thought I counted up 67 lines, and I believe there are 67 it's, lines. I'm sure here. it's going to be close enough. And yeah. uh, thank good. you very much for this work. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I mean, so you've outlined all the changes. Yes. Why you? I mean, the, all the changes that are made are, are made by law, right? I mean, Correct. But when, um, according to the new the changes to the law that you have to present at the first public hearing. So this budget has to be presented in a way showing all of the changes. So we just did it now so that it won't have to be done again because it has to be opened up for discussion at the public hearing and then again at the deliberative session. That's my understanding. Good. So we just did it now because we built the default now. The default doesn't change along the way. Um, so I just took the time to do all of this now and we figured we might as well presented in this manner from here forward if that's the way it has to be done at the public hearing anyway thank you very much mm -hmm. so we can get this out now to the budget committee if you say so Sounds good i'll me. make that motion if we need a motion I'll second all right okay great in favor yeah, yeah. okay all right thank, thank you thank you Chrissy. you did an yep. excellent job as always thank you you just sit there for all that time <laughs> I was naughty this week, I guess. I was on the d on old business instead of an appointment. <laughs> so we have the rest of the warrant articles. I've got the gasoline station. Yep, the first one's a gasoline station. And I'd, I'd move that we drop that. Any other? I'd like to do something with that lot, but I think. I'll second that. Yeah. All those in favor? Unanimous. Capital fund for the turnout gear. Yes. Yes. I move that we go ahead uh, with that. Second. 
I'll Question? No. All those in favor? Yeah. Unanimous. Uh, town meeting warrant articles, the uh, Health and Human, human Service services. Agencies, I'll move to put that forward. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Reevaluation of the property. Same, same thing, move to put it on the warrant. I'll second, second. that too. All right. Yeah. Recreation Infrastructure Special Revenue Fund. Oh, now, um, what, um, what do they have in the, f oh, the withdrawal of 150000 for it? Yeah. I wonder what. There'll be no. Um, no tax impact? No, there's no tax impact on this. Um, they've oh. asked for an additional sum yeah, so. yeah. of 20 some thousand dollars, which is in fact in the account. So we have the money. 24750 right. for tree removal. They got a price in today. Yeah. Yeah. So. 174750 Right. I'll, I'll move that forward. So you want to amend it to the 174750 yeah. yeah. And I also, you know. What's the total in the fund right now, Fred? Do we know? $181,000. Oh, okay. So we're kind of squeaking, but. Yeah. So we have a motion to yeah. amend it. Yeah. Is there okay. a second? A second. Yeah. Motion to approve it as amended. Yeah. Unanimous. Annual town meeting IT. Yeah, we're going to need to do that. I'll move that we put it on as is, unless there's a change. Well, there may be a change for it to come down a little. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. But as it is right now, we'll, we'll approve it as is. Yeah. From the unassigned fund balance. From the unassigned yes. fund balance. Yes. We got a right. motion? Yes. yes. Second. All those in favor? Yes. Unanimous. Yes. And the police forfeiture special revenue fund, that, that has no tax impact. I'll move. No. Move second by Jim. Forward. All those in favor? Yeah. Unanimous. Electronic <laughs> yeah, formatting. We need, we need to follow through with this because we started it last year or in 2018, and I, I would say move it forward. Second? I would second that, yes. All those in favor? Unanimous. Cemetery tree removal. And That's this from the cemetery of, funds. Yes. This will come I, out of the cemetery. I'll move that we put that forward. That's going to be, that's not, uh, no tax impact. Which Correct. Is second by Jim. All those in favor? Yeah. Unanimous. Purchase a load of tractor. Same thing in the uh, trust fund. Right. Uh, no tax impact. I'll yep. move to put that forward. A second. I will second it. All in favor? Unanimous. Same Complete thing the cemetery for the cemetery building. cemetery building, as long as it comes out of that trust fund. All right, two seconds. All those in favor? Yeah. Unanimous. Uh, we need to make the adjustment for Jay on the 20000 on the land acquisition fund. So we, we hold We're holding that hold one on until that. we talk to him. Right. Yep. I just want, can I say something about the cemeteries? Because at the budget committee meeting, there was sort of the, Beat up. Yeah. And uh, we all know what happened with the cemeteries. And the cemetery trustees actually came and approached yeah. us to help them out a little bit with some things they had going on. Yeah. And that's what they've been doing, working with the Board of Selectmen and Town Management and trying to figure out a way that we can get everything mm -hmm. back into shape over there. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're attempting to do. And that's why everyone's going to see a huge increase in the budget and these additional warrant articles mm -hmm. because it's very important that we uh, Get done. keep those grounds up to date, you know. Right. It's also good. a personnel matter, so that's why it's. Yes. So. Right, right. Exactly. Right, right. I, I just want to back up what Regina yeah. said, you know, that it's, it's absolutely necessary. There's been a lot of neglect, and right. it's an area that can't be neglected. Right? That's correct. Right, exactly. Yep. I mean, let, let's be, let's be yeah. honest about it. And, and frankly, folks, um, the cemetery trustees and the section could probably use some guidance. I don't know who the they have been getting guidance, they, and that's they, they which is they, which is why they're where they're they at look now. Kind of scared. Well, they but, they've got a lot going yeah. on. Yeah, I know. I okay. Mean, they, they as long be, as we're working with them, that's a good idea. Yeah, definitely. So we have them uh, for the inside front doors. I'll make uh, that motion. Yeah, I'll second. We need to do that. All those in favor. Unanimous. Too bad we didn't do it last year, the whole thing. The Naval Committee Fund. $10,000 to have a Naval Committee Fund. For what? Come for the from USS the Virginia? Or is this a separate fund from the USS Hampton? I it, it's it's, it's going to be all the same thing. Oh, whenever so whenever, whenever, whenever they need something, they, it'll come out of that fund. So we're not calling it the USS Hampton okay. or the USS Virginia. It is a Naval Fund okay. to act as a host community for the shipyard when they ask us. Do we have a fund now for the USS Hampton? No. No. Okay, no. So, so we don't have to incorporate anything. Correct. That's so correct. this I'll will be just whatever submarine we adopt. Correct. correct. Yeah. 
So motion by okay. Regina. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. <laughs> fund 21 balance to the unassigned fund. Fred, you want to explain yes, this one? Yes, I'll vote for that, definitely. Okay. I'll, I'll move that one on to the warrant. Fred? Uh, fund 21 was, uh, you're all familiar with the current fund that we have for the Recreation Department. Mm -hmm. That was for improvements in the Beach District. And uh, there's $41,616.19 remaining. We attempted to take that and finish up some of the additional street lighting down there last year. The town voted it down. So we're asking these funds that have been sitting around now for yeah. six or seven years to yeah. be put into uh, the un unassigned fund balance to be used to uh, lower taxes. Yeah, excellent. So, yeah, I'll make the motion. Motion second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Paid police detail cost. So this is just to... Uh, We're catching up. Uh, uh, inflation has uh, ruined our margin here a little bit. So we're increasing it from 30% to 50%. These are funds that, that uh, are paid by, not by the town, but by others who hire our police officers. And these pay for those, fun, for those uh, costs that we incur when they're hired, for instance, retirement yeah. allowance and yeah. so forth. So pay for our sick leave and I'll make vacation. That motion, motion second. second. All those in favor? Unanimous. This is revenue, Fred, right? Real, That's correct. Re repeal of the false alarm fees. I'll this move is, that we put it on as is. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Veterans tax credit go from 500 to 750. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Second. Okay. second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Change Veterans Service Connected Disability. Uh, and that, that is about to increase the amount of the veterans mm -hmm. credit from 2000 to 4000 in accordance with the chapter of the law that passed this year. Mm -hmm. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All those in favor? I'm going to oppose. I think we're doing too much too fast here. It's all done by state law. State law said they could do this now, right? Yes. Right? Yep. They didn't say you have to do it. They said you're allowed to do it. Right? No, it doesn't change in like 25 years. Yeah. That's why they finally put one through to yes. increase it. To increase it. We so have we people, we have a few people who have this exemption, but they've had the same exemption for as long as they've. Oh, it already exists. Okay. Yes. That wasn't right. clear to yeah. me. Thank you. It's Sorry about that. Increasing the amount. It's increasing the amount yes. from 2000 to 4000. Got you. Okay. So are you approving that now? Are you, yes. Okay. So okay. unanimous. Optional tax credit for combat service. This is a brand new statute. It hasn't been there before. Uh, if we have National Guard or Army Reserve or military reserve forces that live in town and they're called a combat service, called up by the federal government, we can give them a $500 combat service exemption on their property taxes. Oh while they're in I'll second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. The no smoking ordinance. Oh, Fred did a great job on that. I really like that one. So I'm, smoke it, smoke it long, I'm happy to move it forward. Second? Mm -hmm. Is there a second to move it forward? He gave us a copy a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah. You know, I didn't, I didn't read this. Oh. Do you want to? Uh, well, we can hold I, it till left, but I think a uh, great job. Can, we'll hold, can hold. you summarize it, Fred? Don't smoke on town beaches. <laughs> That's the summarization. The same thing we talked about last year? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yep. All right, I'll second it. All right. All those in favor? Opposed? It also Extension. includes public parks, cemeteries, commons. Yeah. Three oh and one. Yeah. It's very good. Very well done. Firefighter safer grant? Uh, no, I have a question or a, a, I guess a little problem here. I don't want to see both of these warrant articles on there. I want to see one or the other. And since the firefighter safer grant has money coming in, I would rather go ahead with that article to fund four firefighter four new firefighter positions for the next three years. I don't want to put the higher four new four firefighters in. I think it's overdoing it, and I think it will tend to make people shy away. I would rather just see the one with the grant on this year. If it doesn't pass, then next year we could try. As it says at the bottom of the next article, it says the four firefighter positions in this article are the same as the previous article and are not addition to it. If the previous article right. passes, right. this article is null and void. 
Well, that's true. So, just, so what it's saying that is if yeah. if the first if the safer if grant the great passes grant does the it, other one. Yeah. Okay. So Cal is dead. So we have a motion on the safer grant? Yeah, I'll make a motion on that. Second. All those in I'll favor? Say, yeah. Unanimous. The next one, the high of the firefighters. Okay, so where it has that stipulation, Correct. I, I will go with motion. that. Motion. I'll so move. Second. I'll second it. Okay. I'm just unsure about. We've got That's, to have more firefighters. I know. I agree, but I also want it. I mean, it's just. It seems like we're putting it more to chance having them both in there because some people are going to see firefighters two hundred and ninety-five thousand, then they're going to turn yeah, the page I know. and see firefighters two hundred and ninety-five thousand and get upset and say no. But, but again, it's got it at the bottom. So what it, what it's going to do is is if if the safer grant fails, it still gives you the option to have those. And I what just it, maybe we got to tell the firefighters that they need to do something to make sure that people know that because okay. as much as I say it or we say it here there's going to be people that don't yeah. watch the meetings yeah. and they're going to go in and mm -hmm. I'm just scared they're both going to get voted down yeah, because they're going to say that, that, can, that I, I think we should move it forward but they got to get out there and, yeah, and talk about sell it. it like they would with their contracts you know like mm -hmm. explain it to mm -hmm. them they're out there all the time in the public yeah. I, I have a question for Mark can we put in capital letters, are you allowed to use capital letters in the warrant articles so that we could put all in caps if the previous article passes, this article will they be They could put it all in bold. Could I, we? I, I think you could put that language bolded so that bolded uh, would it would highlight the If facts. it would jump right out yeah. at Bolded people. would would allow that to do that. Right? Yeah. Bolded. 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 Yeah. Bolded. yeah. I would like if we, yeah, because it, it is, you're kind of between a rock and a hard place, but maybe that would make you jump out to people. Sure. Okay. And the last one we have is the code enforcement officer. You take the vote on that one? Oh. Yeah, okay, I'll, so the, I'll move that with the The second caps firefighter one. In it. Yeah. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Yeah. Unanimous. Okay. On the code enforcement officer, I'm going to beg, please. We've got to have enforcement in this town. Planning board is certainly not going to do it. But I would st I would strike the um, singular and put code enforcement officers plural to part time with no benefits. I don't want to see us creating another position that's got benefits and. Uh, People are a little upset over salaries anyway. So I would move that we change the wording to plural uh, to instruct to appoint two or, or to appoint code enforcement officers who blah, blah, blah will be responsible. And then the um, sum uh, I think needs to be recalculated because I don't want, I do not want to see a full-time position with benefits. Is there a second for that? And that way Kevin could train them together, you know, get a couple of retired gentlemen or something and well, if one's we've, sick, we've the other We've also tried to do that with some of the other positions and we've gone unfilled for so long because well, we can't get part-time people. But so let's, let's try, Well, I'd rather try it here than lose it. Is there a, a second? I think that I don't know if I'm ready to second it right now. I think I'd rather see what it would be if we were to decide to do two part-timers compared to doing a full-time. Right now we have about 71,000 for a full-time. So I'm not gonna second or agree Can to anything tonight. Can we ask for figures for our final review? Because I think the other thing we need to consider is what's gonna happen, one, I mean, you know when we get a building code enforcement officer, everyone is gonna be calling uh, absolutely. All, all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and what if, like, is it going to be... it's not just building enforcement. It's right, health, it's health, yes. everything. Yes. Everything. Like, is it going to be, like, the animal control officer? Like, are they going to have hours? I don't know. I feel like we need more input from well, whoever have, it would be to talk to, whether it's Kevin or... If you have two people, Kevin can train them, and then they can shift uh, whatever hours they need to have. I the, think most, the most they can work if they're former municipal employees yeah. and trained yeah. would be 16 hours a week. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I'm not necessarily saying we're going to get just former. Well, you know, well but, that's probably what you're looking for because they've got to be trained in the codes and so well, forth. Well, that's true. Jim? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and, and in either way, I'm going to vote against this tonight. I just, I, I think we need a code enforcement officer, but I, I just don't. 
I just don't think this year is the year to do it. I think we got tons of Warren articles here. There are a lot of money. In, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, we're losing, though, on not having enforcement. We really are. We're in trouble. I, I, we are. I, I'm not going to vote for it. Just you want to hold money. temporarily? You want to hold this until we can get back some figures? Yeah, yeah that's that. fine. All right, we can do okay. that. That was the last one, right? Yeah. That's it. I think so. Gee, so we're we're right now. We only have a couple, out. three that <laughs> we need to come back again for. So the, rest, the rest, rest get all passed on to the Passed on. Yeah. Anything else on the old business? Nope. Jim? No. I have a couple of things. One, we had the railings out front that we got a check for a couple oh, yeah. of weeks ago that painted. Yep. And if we get a couple of other nice days like today, can we see that that gets done? Well, I sent a, a note to the Department of Public Works to see if that can happen. I can't guarantee. No, it's, it's all weather dependent. It's That's supposed correct. to be really cold through. The yeah, but if we get a if we get a warm spell, if it we could nice get it done. This morning. Yeah. yeah, but it was also wet too, and they yes. they had a lot of stuff to do after the yeah. parade to pick a lot up of stuff. Fog. So, and the the other. Um, Thing we can talk about is parking at the beach. Uh -huh. You know, we've had Mr. Uh, Preston in a number of times, and uh, Fred gave us the information on. Uh, yes, I haven't had a chance to on, really read on it. On the winter leases. Yeah. And if you look at that, um, in the past four years, it's been from $1 to $700, $750 mm -hmm. per year. Um, I think we need to still do something at the beach there. You know, there, there is some. You know, we have two standards. We have the standard uptown, where people are allowed to park there. Mm -hmm. yep. But down the beach, we have a different standard. And even if we change the beach, we're going to have a different standard because the beach, in the summertime, that's a paid parking lot. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking in the off season, for the for the small amount of revenue that we have <laughs> from that, uh, I think. Notwithstanding, still requiring our businesses that have rentals to have parking. Yes. I don't think this circumvents that part of that law or mm -hmm. ordinance that we allow people to park in the front space of the Ashworth Ave lot as you look at the lot to the right side. Mm -hmm. There's probably 25 spaces there. Oh. We allow them to use those spaces and those spaces only and have a couple of conditions. One, they have to have a town parking sticker. Mm -hmm. And two, the vehicles like they have make them uptown have to be moved the day after the storm to allow public works to be able to completely plow that area. Yeah. If they're not plow if if they don't move their vehicles, they're subject to tow. Yeah. So I think that that's a fair that's, and reasonable. That's good. Um, yeah. Any other questions from the board? No, nope, I, I think it's fair. But what if they can't move their vehicles? Why couldn't they? Because of the snow. Yeah. That's the it, that's the risk. That's the, their risk. They have to get they have to shovel their vehicle out. Yeah. And, yeah. and get it moved. The town will clean up behind it. Right. Okay. But they have to move their vehicle. We right. we can't. You know, we're not. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. It's the same thing they have to do want, uptown. Yeah. 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 No, um, I agree. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah. Fred, do you have any? No, as long as we can get a plow in there and clear behind those vehicles, they can get them out. Right. Yeah. Because okay. you're going to be plowing more snow. When you, you plow, know, you're going to push it'll, snow in there. Well, we'll be pushing it away from the vehicle. Do you want to make a motion on that? Sure. I'll make a motion that we do that. I'll second. So we have a motion. And what we will do is, uh, again, it's more signage. Yep. We'll, we'll have to have a sign on the building and let them know where they park. Mm -hmm. No place else in the lot, right there. So it doesn't hinder any of our parking. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. hinder the police department when they have their training down there for people parking all over the place, and it allows those people to be able to park there. So we'll have a sign that says "parking permit only." You could say that. Well, we should if we if they're you know, supposed that, to get a permit. They have to get a town permit. Yeah. Well, are you talking yeah. about the sticker they automatically get? Yeah, the dump get? sticker. Yeah. The dump sticker, just like okay. they would get and use in any of the other parking right. lots. Yeah, this is only from November 14th to March 14th. Correct. 15th, November 15th. Mm -hmm. to March. Right. During the no parking yet. During, right. during, during when the parking lots are closed. Right. Once the parking lot's open, they, the par that goes away. Right. Okay. Right. But it right. helps for the winter. We yeah. can do that. Good idea. 
So I, I think motion. signage will be critical. And signage will be critical, and yeah. I know it's a I'll little extra is going to come out of it. Go ahead. Yeah. Jim Pastor, right. you oh, second you it. All those in favor? Okay. Unanimous. A legal sign. Legal sign, yes. So. <laughs> oh, you want me to make it an illegal sign? I can do <laughs> so parking at the beach, railing. I do that too. And then um, I'm, I'm just going to, under old business, I did have a concern about the, the town beach at the, uh, the pier. And uh, we're oh, going to work it. He's that, yeah, work. Man, man's working it right he, over there. He's going to be working on that with, uh, uh, to get that corrected as soon as possible. Okay. All right, 2019 selectmen's meeting schedule. Thank you. I received it. I object. I think I left my house. Any other questions? Or? No, I think we should be meeting every Monday. I, I'll. I'll um, keep quiet if you miss a couple of Saturdays in the summer, but I think it's our duty to work for the public. I don't like that schedule at all. Um, yeah, this was my suggestion that we do this, and the reason so was because I think that we would actually get more accomplished if uh, Christina and management and everyone else that's trying to get things on the agenda doesn't have to scramble in really a four-day period if you need to get the agenda out by Friday for Monday. So looking at this yesterday, this proposed schedule would give us 29 meetings out of 52 weeks. Correct. So we still most of the times out of, so for January, January, July, October, so five or six months, we'd still be meeting three times a week. Oh, and then the other three times, times a month. Oh, three times a month, I'm <laughs> sorry. And then all the other months, it would be two on, two off. Well, October, November, December, we meet. A lot of those are holidays anyway. Yeah, but we meet, we'd still have three meetings in October, November, December. Yeah, there's like well, five or six months. There's five or we'll six still months we're having at least three meetings, so. And the, like right. I say, in October with Columbus Day, November's Veterans Day, we'd be missing those anyways. Um, July. Yeah, I'd like to get some more feedback on this. Okay, from? People. You know, I mean, we're making a pretty drastic change. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I would go with our schedule as we have it now. I'm not ready to vote. I'm not ready to approve this. So. I will absolutely not approve this. We have, uh, we have this. We'll 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 give it another couple of weeks to go over it before the start of the year, and bring it back. Okay, let's go. With bring it back in two right. meetings. Get some input. From get some people. input from the public. See okay. what they think. Yeah. That, now that we have a, a list of how it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have the Aquarium Water Company. Mary Louise, you brought that up. Well, I certainly did. Um, Earlier in the year, I remember uh, turning on my kitchen faucet and having a whole pile of filthy water come out. I called Fred and said, help, what's going on? And Aquarian had done some digging, whatever they were doing, and didn't think to notify anybody that uh, their water was going to come through all dirty. Uh, and we were supposed to, Fred said we were supposed to run the faucets for 15 minutes to clear the water, which did work. But on last Thursday, uh, 10 minutes of 6 in the evening, I'm getting ready to put down the supper for the kitties and rinse out their water bowls and fill them with nice fresh water. And I turned on the kitchen faucet, and it hissed, and it jumped, and I thought the faucet was going to hit the ceiling. And I'm not kidding you. This is a dreadful pain in the neck. So I quick shut it down, and I stood there trying to figure out what the devil was going on. So I gingerly tried lifting it up just a little bit, and it was still hissing and sputtering and making a big fuss. So I thought about it, and I called one of my neighbors, and I said, Are you having a problem with your water? And he said, oh, I saw somebody out there tinkering with the hydrant a little while ago. 
So I said, hmm. So I called the emergency number for the police department, very nice dispatcher. I explained the problem, and I didn't know what I was going to do with this mess at 6 o'clock in the evening. So uh, she, I gave her my phone number, and she said, do you mind if I share this with Aquarian? And I said, no problem. Uh, please do. So about 10 minutes later, one of their employees called me from Seabrook, and uh, he said he'd have to come up and bleed the line and told me that he needed an outdoor faucet to do that. So I promised that I would turn on the outdoor faucet, which I had turned off at the end of September so it wouldn't freeze over the winter. And uh, then uh, 15 min about 15 minutes later, after I called the nice dispatcher at BD, called me and asked if everything was all right, if I was going to be getting help, which was very nice. She did a follow-up call. I went down in the cellar immediately and turned the faucet on. I told the man that there is a faucet on the driveway side, so it was easy access, and that I would release the, uh, you know, open the, the faucet. Uh, ten minutes of, and by the way, there's no uh, <clears throat> water. Uh, so I went to my budget meeting, at, backing out of the driveway at ten minutes of seven, and the nice gentleman was there, and he opened the faucet, and it was spitting out a huge amount of water with a whole bunch of coughs and spits and whatever it did, and it was jiggling the outdoor faucet. So I figured I'd deal with whatever when I got home. I got home about 9.15, and, or it was quarter of nine, what, right in that neighborhood. And the first thing I saw was the driveway all the way to the barn with water. A neighbor told me that the gentleman was at my house for at least 20 minutes. And all that time the water was spitting out. I don't know how many gallons that represents, but I'll tell you one thing, I'm not gonna pay for that water. Then, so it's all down the driveway, dug a hole in my strawberries under the faucet, and I went down in the cellar to shut off the faucet so that I wouldn't forget it. And I happily turned around and saw water all over the cellar floor. My house was built in 1903, and I have a laid rock cellar foundation. And with the, I never use the outdoor faucets without hooking up the hose. Well, the hose was packed in the barn at the end of September because I didn't need it anymore. And the faucet, which is right up against the house, was spitting out huge quantities of water in addition to the puffing with the, with the air. And, uh, so I enjoyed two, week, two days of cleaning up the cellar where all the water leaked. Um, one of my neighbors had also called me um, early on and said she was having a terrible time and her husband wasn't home and she didn't know what to do. So I told her the Aquarian truck would be coming, she should flag him down when, it, when he went by her. Uh, then, since then, I have learned from friends who have called that down as far as Dunvegan Woods, they had problems with air in the line. Um, I am furious. I don't know whether they were trying to, um, that we've, we've received notices that say we have already uh, cleaned or the hydrants, 17 hydrants, and we have 469 more to go or something. I thought it was made clear to them, and I think they should know already that they shouldn't be servicing hydrants in the cold weather. And uh, once I did get home after I shut off the faucet in the cellar, I turned on the kitchen faucet again. It was spitting and huffing, not as bad as it had before. Then I got a pile of dirty water. Then I went into the bathroom, and that huffed and sniffed and made a racket, and dirty water again. And then I flushed the toilet, and a big puff, and the, the ceramic lid on the toilet tank was up about half, about, about an inch. It popped right up in the air. So I left the water running. I will tell you I have no idea how many gallons 
were consumed with the uh, man trying to bleed the lines. Um, and then, of course, I wasted water. I didn't mean to waste water, but trying to clear the line with the dirt. And I am not a happy person. Have this is called, twice. Have you called Aquarian and to explain the situation to them? Big part. Well, this, their service technician knows perfectly well what happened. He heard it all. But you're claiming now that you, you, you had a water bill. Have you called them and explained no, that to them? No, I didn't say I have a water bill yet. Well, you I, said you, you had a bunch of water that you weren't paying for. Have you called them and asked them about No, that? I haven't called them and asked well, them because I'm be absolutely the first place furious to start. with them. And I'm trying to calm down before I have any that communication. That would probably be the first place to start. Well, the it first seems like place they had to some air in the line, and that's how it—that's how you get rid of it. Well, have they been telling us when they have dirty water and stuff, Fred? I thought you—I thought we agreed with them that they would notify us if they had, uh, you know, dug up a pipe or something, and they knew the water was going to be dirty, so they'd tell people to run the water for 15 minutes. I don't think this was a digging situation. I'm sorry? I don't think this was a digging situation. No, I know that. I agree yeah. with you. I don't right. know how it happened, but I am, mm. quite frankly, furious. Well, then you ought to contact them first and then come in here and give well, us Well, they don't a, know what they're doing. history of what happened. They don't know what they're doing? They call they're, them. Th their employee didn't tell them oh what was God. happening? It's, it's unacceptable to have that mess. Okay. I am really, really cross. I have a question that Hampton's building footprint data by the NHDHHS. Fred? The Bureau of Infectious Disease Control would like a copy of our building footprints in the town. It's uh, Cartographics uh, Technologies has, uh, CAI Technologies has, has that data. It's something that's property of the, of the town and the board. Uh, I need your permission to release it and only that data. There are other things embedded within that program that should not be released. Some of it deals with Homeland Security matters. So with your permission, we'll just give the data that they are requesting, but only the footprints of the buildings. And do you think that's a, that's fine? That should be fine. There shouldn't be a problem with that. I'll make a motion. Okay. Yeah, I'll second. Second. Motion second. All those in favor? Yeah. And, and I have it, one thing to add yes. at the end. Um, Mark did an awesome job today at the PUC hearing with Aquarian. Mm. Right. And uh, I'm going to save the details for a later date, but I just want to let the public mm. know that we do have some issues with Aquarian operations. And it gets pushed oh, every time that they do a new WICA filing, it gets pushed down the road because WICA filings don't let us talk about these things. So the town council and I are working on a way that maybe we can get some of these major issues, hydrants, increasing block rates, the way they build, things like that addressed. And we had a really good meeting today, and we're going to have another one in a few weeks. So we'll probably be updating the board with some more definite information at that time. And how about air and the water lines? They're not overly cooperative. Make a motion so, that we hold on. First of all, I want to thank Regina and and Mark for going to those today yes. and looking out for us. She's doing a great job of that. Good. Second of all, what was I want to make a motion to adjourn. Motion At to adjourn. At what time? Time, time. It's 10.13. 10.15. Thank you, 13. Mr. Chairman. I'll Thank second you. the motion <laughs> to adjourn. All in favor. Okay.